You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. We're going to start with the Town of Brantford Board of Finance budget public hearings for the fiscal 23-24 year, and today's date is March 20th, 2023. Uh, and before we get into the first presentation by the Police Department, I just would like to do an overview of the overall budget that's been prepared by the Finance Office and the First Selectman's Office uh, for the benefit of the RTM and, and the Board of Finance. The budget requests in total are $135,173,000. The estimated revenues are $16,681,000. And the net to be raised from taxation is at this point an estimated $118,492,000. That's based on a grand list of 3.879 billion uh, dollars, and it would, um, if everything was uh, passed and and um, and agreed upon, it would be a mill rate of 31.27. Now, as comparison to last year, the budget that was approved by the RTM. Uh, and the Board of Finance turned out to be an, uh, a 2.9 percent increase. Uh, this request, the 135 million that's presented to us, is an increase of 10 million dollars and a 8.3 percent increase. The net grand list last year increased by approximately 3.2 percent, which helped out on the net tax net to be raised from taxation. This year, it's estimated at 1.8. The mill rate last year that was approved ultimately, ultimately by the Board of Finance was stable. It was at 29.45. It didn't change. This would be a, a 6.1 percent increase in the in the mill rate. So um, there's lots of reviews that would that are going to be undertaken by not only this board but also subsequently the the RTM. And after their de deliberations in May, it'll that. Uh, budget will come back to us and we will set the mill rate and finalize the revenues. The uh, Board of Ed request is at 5.8 percent uh, initial request for operating budget and uh, last year we approved a 1.7 percent increase. Uh, the overall town budget last year was a 4.6 percent increase. This year the request is 8.1. So we will meet tonight uh, as the, the public, with the public hearing. We will recess and, and then recommence tomorrow, Tuesday, and then the final uh, public hearing will be held on Thursday. After that, we will deliberate among ourselves, and the board will then, the Board of Finance will meet on next Monday, and we will cut the budget and recommend a budget to the RTM for their deliberations as well. So with that, we will start the presentations by the police department, which is on page 31 and 32. Oh, I'm sorry, before we get started, I just want to mention that, in fact, we've adopted a, a new uh, platform in order to run our budgets. And this is a transitional year, so we're still using the book with the information behind it. Uh, clear government is the application that the Board of Finance and RTM approved some time ago that Jim and Catherine have implemented with all the departments, so thank you for that. And also thank you for, I guess, the patience as we kind of work through the transition so that the budget books are a little slimmer, but there's a, there's a ton of information that's av available um, through the uh, uh, clear.government, clear government? Clear, yeah. yeah. clear, clear.gov. Um, and we're, so we're all kind of working through how to access the platform. and. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to increase the transparency, not only for the, our bodies and our boards of, uh, that are acting on the budgets, but also the public and such. So it's a good thing. We're going to 
um, there, there may be some references to those types of in, that information that may be in, in, in the PDF or the, in clear.gov. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to proceed as we have in the past through the, the, the budget book. So again, on page 31, uh, Police Department, welcome, Chief. Good evening. Uh, pretty much a uh, quick synopsis, a repeat almost of last year. You'll see on page 31, the vast majority of that is all our personnel related lines. We are without a contract at this point, so you will not see any increases in that. Um, within there, in our overtime line, I did put in a transfer from our vacation overtime line to our regular overtime line, $20,000. This is a, uh, a quick snapshot estimate of um, some increased costs we're seeing with court appearances and officers. We have um, some changes that necessitate officers going to court more often. Um, it's attributed to what we call risk protection orders. When someone, <coughs> excuse me, when someone is a uh, perceived or there's cause to believe they're a danger to themselves or others, we have to file court paperwork now to uh, prohibit them from having weapons and this has some hearings and court appearances attached to it. So I do think this line, um, this transfer will help mitigate it. Um, hopefully we will not have any major incidents or, or some severe weather events and we can cover some of the projected increase within those lines. So that's what that transfer is about. <coughs> Lastly, uh, in the personnel area, the accumulated sick pay, Basically, that's a officer that we have retiring in uh, October pursuant to the collective bargaining agreement. And on 31, the only other area <coughs> to point out would be fuel. Uh, a slight increase uh, to try to hedge what we're going to be in store for for this year. Um, our numbers have, have gone up and down um, a high of, of four four dollars plus a gallon just on the PD side we use about 3,000 gallons uh, a month and some of the recent ones as low as 323 to 384 so you know as we all are aware that market um, has been volatile so just a slight increase there to kind of represent what our true number was on page 32 you will see radio communication uh, communication system expense a minor increase at 2600 we went from some old um, copper transmission lines up to a, a fiber a more robust more durable system that ties into our radio repeating towers and uh, enhancing our, our communication infrastructure and lastly is membership conferences and meetings a $3,500 increase this is directly related to our regional efforts um, we've had great success and we do have accounts that help us buy larger capital items uh, with the six towns that we, we cooperate with. And looking at our membership fees and upcoming uh, large ticket items that we need to buy, it was uh, decided that we each increase 1,000 on each side. So that's where you're coming up with 3,500. That's our regional traffic, our regional SWAT, and our Shoreline Commuter, uh, Computer Crimes Task Force. So for the budget, that's all I have. Um, Thanks, Chief. Um, so it's a total request of $7,206,862. Uh, an overall increase of 52613 or 7 tenths of 1%. Questions from the, from the board on this budget? Hi, Chief. Listen, would you go over again the need for more money for a part-time clerical? Oh, thank you for, for pointing that out. I uh, overlooked that. In there also is a request for another part-time clerk in our records division. What we've experienced um, over the past year or so is our body cam footage is now being utilized in many other ways. You know, it used to be directly related to a criminal case. Now it's basically being FOI'd for everything we do, whether it's a minor parking lot car accident, the attorneys want that video. And pursuant to FOI, there's a lot of requirements we have to abide by. So if there's a juvenile in that video, we have to redact the juvenile. If it pans to the officer in the car and the camera captures uh, our computer system, that screen has to be redacted in that video. 
So every FOI request we get for body cam footage has to be viewed in its entirety. And it's creating a uh, pretty significant backlog and a lot of extra labor, uh, kind of unintended consequences, the benefits, but it's leading to a lot more on the FOI side. I do not see this uh, going away anytime soon. So we are, we're running about a four month wait now um, and we're, we're pretty responsive department. We have to prioritize between our courts and regular FOI requests. So the need to bring another clerk on a part-time um, is needed. Okay. Other questions on the operating side from the chief? Uh, and also we'll take uh, comments or questions from the public or the RTM members at this time with regards to the police budget. Okay, with no takers, and why don't we move on to capital? And I believe that's on page um, 72. 49 and 53 of our uh, supplemental. Right? Yeah. So be on our 49 to 53 is back there. So um, what I've got achieved the first one, is that, is that the one we're going to go off at, Jim? Yeah, okay. So, um, <clears throat> I have ballistic vest replacement. Yeah. So, can you explain that, Charlie? Yeah. What I did, I actually took mine out. That way you oh, just took it back. It's in the back. Um, That's 48, isn't it? Page 49 yeah, is the first request in this. Uh, and it's a ballistic vest replacement fund. So you're asking for uh, the nine thousand dollars, nine thousand one thirty-two. Yeah. So this is something we embarked on, um, I believe, three years ago, where we um, are in a five-year cycle with ballistic vests for our officers, and this is just the uh, number every year for that contribution. We also do get a 50% uh, match through a grant funding source. That's it's not guaranteed, but it's been pretty consistent. So that. 9,100 is the contribution we need every year to meet that five-year um, replacement. The line below that, the portable re radio replacement, that's something that's been ongoing for many years. It's a good idea. Basically, the radios are very expensive, and we can chip away at it at a very um, low number every year, and that way there I'm not in front of you in five years or ten years asking for an exorbitant amount of money. So it's a very good program that we've been doing for years and stick with. So that's 9,800. Yep. And speed detection and warning devices, this encompasses all the radar units in our cars as well as the speed signs that you see throughout town. And if we are in need of um, a speed trailer, which is mobile, you'll see those throughout town. This has been very well received. It's helping us try to control some of the speeding, one of the biggest complaints we have here in town. Uh, and the presence of these devices has shown some, some positive impacts. Uh, the big one, the patrol vehicles, the, the bad news is uh, there's a pretty significant price increase this year. Ford basically dropped a increase on the police utility uh, interceptor, which we utilize, and there's not a whole lot that we can do about that. So between some of the inflation the electronics and the labor increases in cost, never mind the vehicle itself, we're looking at about $10,000 more per car. And on top of that, we've had significant delays. We've been about a year behind between production to receipt to upfitting to getting them on the, on the road. So we are trying to, to get ahead of that, but we can expect uh, about forty, forty-two, forty-four thousand dollars per car this year. So you, those increases are reflective in that. And in this ask is five cars. The reason is is we do have one detective vehicle that needs to be uh, replaced, but I can probably do that through a transfer in this fiscal year. But the cycle of keeping these up to date and not running them too high and also we've 
turn back a couple that were basically unserviceable, older ones that we've uh, transferred over to Public Works, which they go out to auction, they're not worth much. So the five is, is what we need to do to stay on point. And the reason why you know, I didn't go with four is the, the fifth is needed. And on top of it, the durations are, are kind of concerning. You know, the time that we're waiting for these. Um, and also, during production, some municipalities have been turned away. They have a bid open cycle where you put in your order, and if you miss that, you better find a vendor that has some. If not, you're in trouble. And also, you put in for your production, and they email you back and say you're not getting it. So there's been some instability in that, that supply for us. Other than that, there's, uh, there's nothing else on the capital side. Thanks, Chief. Questions on the capital and the board? I just want to uh, have my, it's about 44 per car plus 26 to equip it, so it's, it's about 70. Yeah, that's, okay. that's. Uh, Is there anything in here in your capital, that, like what do they call it, the forfeiture fund that you have? I mean, is there anything that can be? Yeah, so that, uh, that's always a question that comes up and those funds are, are very strictly held and there's parameters on that. So anything that doesn't have a drug nexus to it or anything that's been funded by the municipality on a consistent basis, i.e. Oh. vehicles. Oh, so yeah, if we wanted to start a drug unit and buy an undercover car, we could do that. But if we had, say, 30 cars in our fleet, we would have to maintain 31. We can't supplant. Um, so when we look at those funds, a lot of times it's for training equipment, and that's where we get the nexus to. But that's very... Um, fairly closely monitored and I have to justify every single expenditure and normal items requested during a budget they, they don't fit mm -hmm. yeah no I had to ask thanks chief yeah. and that that well is going dry also we've seen a significant decline in state and federal monies being turned over to us over the past few years so that uh, that well will be dry what's what's the balance in there now uh, don't hold me to it 60 68 okay. somewhere near there yeah we just we just spent a hundred grand on the regional command post. Okay. So we pulled out a fair amount. Okay. Other questions on the capital mm -hmm. items? Questions from RTM members or the public? Frank Tuhill, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just wanted to know about the cars. Now the Crown Vic, the Ford, was the you know the model that was used everywhere. So that's out of production now, Chief. So I mean, what type of car do you do you, see, you see us buying? Yeah, so years back, they they discontinued that, and they went with these utility interceptor ones that you see now that are pretty much familiar. They are kind of the industry standard. We, I'd say 90, 95% of our fleet is that vehicle. And in speaking with Public Works, we've had good luck and good maintenance histories. Our options are limited. Chevy does have the Tahoe. It's a little bit bigger. Depending on how you spec it, it could be a little more expensive. But for daily use, the officers like these, and the durability and the reliability is what we kind of look at. Dodge does have a little grip in the market, but my history with that has been there's been some maintenance issues with those. Um, so we would like to stay standard and, and stick with what we have. Thank you, Chief. Yep. Okay, other questions from the Chief on the budget? Um, not Chief, we'll go to special detail on page 33. Uh, fairly perfunctory, but um, yep. it's the 525000 with the, on the expenditure side, we're offsetting uh, 525000 on the revenue side. Uh, any comments you have on with regards to special detail? You're no. good? That's Questions fine. on special detail from the board? No. Uh, anybody from the public or RTM? Not. thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Next up is emergency management. Page 34. Mm -hmm. So you have your entourage with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not right. Anyway, what, what a police chief didn't have anybody. <laughs> We're here for backup for him. <laughs> <laughs> we welcome. got Moses, you got the guns. <laughs> welcome, welcome, gentlemen. We had us back. Um, <laughs> the uh, emergency management budget, um, 
is uh, the uh, $500 increase in, in this year's budget is related to software purchases, one being the uh, emergency mass certification software, code red, and um, the OC, which is our uh, emergency management software. Um, so the total request of $30,500. Uh, questions from the board with regards to the emergency management budget on page 34. Questions uh, from the Frank, you have a question? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a question on the stipend. I thought I thought the stipend was going to be rolled in to the uh, chief's uh, pay. Um, not this stipend. Um, it, it was my other stipend in, um, on the fire side. Okay. Um, and um, it should also just be noted that um, we, this budget represents 100% of the budget, but um, we receive 50% back from the state of Connecticut in the uh, EMPG grant, which we uh, receive uh, on an annual basis. Okay, thank you for that. Um, any questions, other questions from uh, the general public, or RTM members? Chief? Sorry, yeah, yeah, just to ask you about the volume and the difference between pre-COVID, COVID, and where you are now with, with the emergency calls. Um, as far as the fireside area or, yes. or overall? This overall. Is right. overall, probably. Well, emergency management, um, it's been a lot quieter with the COVID um, since we've kind of figured out how to navigate it now and it doesn't seem to be as, um, you know, effective as it was or, um, but on the fire side, we continue to be upward. During COVID, we saw a decrease in call volume. And as of April last year, we saw a significant increase come back and it hasn't stopped. So we had a record year last year, 6,415 calls. How, how many am ambulances are available per shift? No. So we staff three ambulances um, seven days a week, one of them being part-time, and it, that part-time unit's only on until midnight. The other are firefighter paramedics, so they're cross-trained, dual-rolled. We, we basically do one call at a time. If the ambulance goes out on a medical, it's on a medical. If fire comes in, we're down to. If they're there when the fire comes in, we have two extra firefighters. Okay, so what I'd like to do is to finish up on this budget first yep. before we get into the fire and uh, ambulance okay. budget. So um, there is a distinction, and um, is there anything else on emergency management? That's it, Joe, just that. Okay. Pretty stable. Um, okay, so then we'll move on to the fire services, which I think more is more appropriate with your line of questioning, Harry, okay. just for reference. Um, so for the fire budget is on page 35 and 36 and your request is for seven million four hundred five thousand four hundred ninety six dollars a three point one percent increase on the operating side two hundred twenty three thousand so uh, would you like to uh, expand on the high points of the in requested increase i would um i'll start on the personal personnel side of the budget so these are all contractual um the uh, contractual increases that we uh, we agreed upon in the firefighters contract. Um, some uh, areas decreased, uh, to Frank's point earlier, the 2,000 you see there is one decrease um, in the stipends, uh, under stipends, which is uh, down toward the bottom of the personnel side. That um, would have been uh, um, $12,000 if it wasn't for uh, rolling it into the other. So those have been reduced um, by that amount. Um, the rest of them is, um, are all the uh, contractual obligations. Uh, they typically have ran a 2.5% increase, um, but depending on where they are in the steps, um, not everybody, you know, it doesn't, doesn't always reflect in the percent side of the budget the exact 2.5. So you may see like 2.3 under salaries, but that's that reflection. Yeah. Um, and my reflect that, or comment that on page 79 is the detail of the fire department salary breakout just as what you're referring to there. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chief. Um, and then uh, there is no accrued payroll expense, so $14,000 we were able to decrease this year. Um, so that was 1.9% total increase on the personnel side. On the um, non-personnel side, we did try to um, adjust, make some adjustments for inflation. Um, we have seen, um, as Chief Mulhern was stating, everything's up. Um, and um, one of the, uh, the the largest is the uh, the hydrants. Um, hydrants account for almost 13% of my budget. They um, okay. the uh, 
$88,500 increase <laughs> reflects um, where we're, what we're seeing in this current budget and then the anticipated increase for next year. So um, without that 88,500, our uh, budget would have been 1.9% increase, but it's at 3.1 with the hydrants and mains. Um, everything else was just, um, you know, what we felt was a, was a, uh, a good, um, a good number for, uh, you know, for re to react to the inflation that we're seeing in all our supply accounts. Okay. Um, questions on the operating uh, budget request from the fire department? There, uh, okay. hey, Chief, you're fully up to staff. Um, the staff that we have, we have 100%, but we have people out on long-term injury. So we're... Okay, how many of those? Right now I have four out. Four out. Okay. Uh, do you see a need for anything coming in the future? Um, so I would be remiss to say that, uh, <coughs> you know, we, uh, we didn't intend to ask for personnel this year. We're... Um, my uh, new assistant chief, Brian Kozak, who's with us tonight, are working on a staffing plan. I think um, all of us can appreciate that for many years, Brantford Fire Department was primarily staffed by volunteers. Volunteers have steadily declined over the years, and we're at a critical point right now where um, I really felt that, you know, we wanted to put a comprehensive staffing plan to together, which we're doing. Um, but I needed to put a finger in the dike. So in my discussions with the first selectman, the finance director, they've put a sum of money, I believe it's $250,000 into contingency. So we can talk about just that issue on a night when you're not dealing with all these other okay. other issues. Um, so the answer is, yeah, we're coming back. To yeah, okay. you. We're gonna come back to their presentation. Yeah. <laughs> There's some grants out there, which we gotta look at. So for personnel, when the time comes. Okay. Uh, thanks for the warning. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, other questions with regards to the operating budget? Uh, members of the RTM or general public have a question with regards to the fire department request? If not, we'll move on to capital, which is on page 33 to 38 of our, of our additional handouts. And first on that one is Fire Apparatus Sinking Fund. Thank you. Um, so most of these are sinking funds. Um, and um, we're able to reduce our ask this year by um, $343,000 less than fiscal 23, um, primarily due to the um, mid-year adjustment we made last, um, this current fiscal year, on the um, Apparatus Sinking Fund and also by funding um, one of the ambulances as we did last year out of the ARPA money. So um, that's allowed us to come in a, a little bit lower on, the, on our capital request. Well, at the same time, um, we feel we're funding the sinking funds appropriately to get us where we need to, to get in the years to move forward. Okay, so... I see the next one on page 39 is GGB. So that's, is that the, um, I'm not. Page 33, Joe. Page 33? Okay, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Get used to this new system here. So, mm -hmm. power load ambulance stretcher mount. <clears throat> so, we've been uh, trying to outfit all of our ambulances with the, with the striker system, which basically our power assists stretchers to lift and then the power load actually brings the stretcher in, locks it in. It's a much safer system for the patient, but it also reduces um, the amount of injuries. And as you know, when I got four people right out right now, I don't need any more injuries. So, um, we'd like to, uh, this would, uh, would outfit the fourth ambulance with the power load. And then uh, the ambulance that we currently have ordered will come with it, and that will complete the... Uh, the system for us. So, so what do you do for, uh, and one of Victor's questions, we used to be around workers' comp and such um, with regards to training and uh, monitoring and proper lifting and exercise and such. How's that going? So we do work with uh, human resources and our insurers to bring in proper lifting techniques. 
Um, we train all of our people, and um, we also have a fitness clause where we're, uh, you know, it's one of those sensitive areas where we, you know, we, we ha our enforcement is, is uh, you know, such that you can only do so much, honestly. They're people, and people are people. But we do, uh, we do uh, work hard to prevent injuries. This is one way that we, we have is on the engineering side to provide the equipment for them. On the other hand, um, I'll give you, for instance, we talked a little bit about staffing earlier. We have 10 firefighter paramedics on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our neighboring town, Guilford, has 10 firefighter paramedics on duty seven days a week. And um, we do approximately 50% more workload than those than those firefighters. So our people are getting hammered right now. Right. And that's probably one of the con contributors to some of the, the injuries. The injuries such, yeah. Yeah. All right, Chief, thanks. Um, and the next request was the cardiac monitor defibrillators. <coughs> so um, cardiac monitor is the uh, diagnostic piece of equipment we use to uh, look at your heart, do a full 12 lead EKG in the field, and uh, then we can determine whether you're having uh, um, we can presume we are having an MI and activate the cath lab from the field, which saves a lot of time and essentially saves heart muscle, which, you know, f overall provides, you know, the individual who may be having the, uh, the heart attack with a lot less injury to their, to their heart muscle. And uh, a lot of times they're able to walk out of the hospital like it never happened after some rehab. Um, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's an expensive piece of equipment. We ha we're on about a seven to eight year cycle with with the monitors and um, the price of 39,000 includes the protective equipment and some of the uh, um, extras that go along with that. So how many does this fund? This is one. This is one, okay. Yeah. Got it. Um, the last time we funded one, Joe, was 28,000. Right. <laughs> That's and what, uh, <coughs> what uh, ambulance is this on? Or is this, uh, where is this? They, um, they're on all, all five of our ambulances and the two paramedic units. Okay. So the newer one typically will go to wherever the old one is. So this one, these all cycle through from year to yeah, year. Yeah, and we have one as a spare. So if we, we go down for whatever reason, we can continue. Got it. Okay. Uh, breathing apparatus? Um, that's the uh, annual contribution we've been working towards to get to the, uh, you know, the final sum of money in 2025 to replace our breathing apparatus on schedule. We, uh, we started that sinking fund, I believe. And again, how many does this fund? Year. How many does this fund? This is going to uh, replace all the breathing apparatus. Um, I believe there's 36 units. Okay. I'd have to, I don't have that uh, detail with me in this. Uh, Brian, did you bring that? No. Um, yeah, there we go. So you're saying fully, fully replacement by 2026? <coughs> yes. Okay. Year 2026, and um, I'm sorry, I was way underestimating. It was a total of 56 units. Total was 50. And so this will fund a portion of them. This will fund the, a portion of that to get to that final number in 2026. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we basically um, took where we thought we we took the price okay. at the time. We added a. Um, 5% increase consistently over all the years of the sinking fund and um, came up with the total number and then divided about the number of years and that's where we came up with the 85,000. Um, I don't believe by the time we get to 2026 we'll need 56 units. I think we can decrease some of those um, in conjunction with the uh, staffing issue we're having with the volunteer side. Okay, thanks. Next is the uh, radio upgrade, the, sink, the radio upgrade sinking fund, contribution of 40000 um, So we, we've funded this fairly heavily the last few years. <coughs> and, um, one of the reasons was we built an entirely new transmitter site on the east side of town at exit 56 in conjunction with the state. Um, it is um, both police frequency or fire frequencies along with the police. Um, it's a it's a full site, so it's a receiver and a transmitter site. It's our only other full site in town. Um, the other one's on Snake Hill, so it it is greatly improved um, our communication ability out there, um, and it has also allowed us to add redundancy. 
And then um, this past year, um, we had asked for, um, in fiscal 23, an extra 150000 and that was to fund um, radios for interoperability. We're working a lot closer with our mutual aid partners. Um, North Brantford just went to uh, the state backbone, and um, there's many other people on that state backbone, including on the ambulance side. So this allows all of our frontline mutual aid ambulances, our command staff, and our, um, our um, ambulances to communicate with pretty much anybody outside of, of the town of Brantford which as time goes on, it's, it's more and more of a requirement, especially for grant funding, that you, know, you work well with your neighbors and you're able to, um, to operate, especially at the command level. Sure, okay. Um, but we were able to reduce it more, and, and so the idea behind mm -hmm. that fund is, is that we keep back a portion for those major infrastructure when, when the consoles go down or the um, not the consoles, the police typically take care of the consoles, but some of the guts in them that the fire department handles, the repeater sites throughout town, of which we have three, um, when those go, they're big bucks. So we, uh, we fund the portables, the mobiles, and those larger things out of that account. Okay, thanks, Chief. Uh, lastly, is the ambulance sinking fund uh, requested 75000 yeah, since we purchased the ambulance from uh, ARPA last year and we had a fund balance, which we also um, had contributed to last year, we're able to, um, you know, reduce that ask this year and, and still get to the number needed for when we do need to purchase our next ambulance. Okay, uh, questions from the chief or, or the, the commissioners for uh, capital items, capital requests? Yeah. Questions from RTM members or the general public? Ma'am, if you could stand up and um, there's a microphone that, uh, that you could use, please, and identify yourself. Thank you. Frank's in charge of the microphone. Hi there, thank you. Um, I'm Linda Erlanger from District 3, thank you. Um, I just have a very quick question. I notice on the ambulance sinking fund um, that there's an average annual revenue of almost two million dollars noted. Yes, ma'am. Where is that money placed back into the revenues of the budget? Is that um, it, that is it, it, we pick it up as a revenue item in the front part of the budget? Right. So is that a departmental receipt? What, what is that? What, what would that be? General fund. Actually, it goes into the general fund, ma'am, okay. and it's it's um, and it's uh, it's yeah, accounted well, for, Jim. You want to address yeah, that? Yeah, would be a departmental receipt. Departmental receipt, okay. Okay, that was, okay good. That's all I want to do. Okay. Uh, other questions? <coughs> if not, um, I think we're good, folks. Appreciate the presentation. If Thank I could just way. make one quick comment on the ambulance fund, um, that uh, we will be, uh, I think, exceeding $2 million in revenue this year. Obviously, the call volume increases. The revenue goes along with it. Revenue was down during the COVID years, but we're back up to where we... Uh, we're uh, closer to where we think. Um, we always budget conservatively because we have to hit that number and it's not a guaranteed number. But based on historicals, we should, uh, I know we're going to do um, at least 300000 more than we budgeted for this year. So that's, um, and uh, that $2 million accounts for about 27% of my budget. So, so I'm showing a million eight thirty five in ambulance uh, revenue estimates, which is up 110000 now you you're grossing over two million, but you also have the you, they you, we actually receive the net based on the service company that does the billing and right. such, correct? Right. So right, so that's a uh, an expense. Um, I think uh, we did hundred and hundred and thirty two thousand six hundred last year. So that's okay. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions? I think we're all set. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, you. Thank you. Next is engineering on page 42. I guess. Welcome, John. Thank you. Just me. Yes. How are you? Just you. Hello, everyone. So we have a, a budget request of 
466,162, uh, increase of 823,000, $823. So just to touch on the highlights here, the um, regular wages and salaries, that just reflects my increase, contractual increase. Uh, the other four employees are two different unions that are under negotiations right now, so that's why that's only at that point six. Um, I think that's really it on that side, on the operating. Okay. Um, questions on the operating budget of 466162 from the board? Questions from the RTM members and general public? If not, we'll move to capital on page 20, beginning on page 25, right? Yes. It's on that sheet. What's 25. Um, yep. I got it. 25. I got it. Yep. Thank you. I, I pulled the sheet out. Page 25 is where it starts. And uh, your fleet fueling station. Right. So this is, um, this is for the, in, the entire fleet of the town um, outside of uh, Public Works and the treatment plant have their own fueling uh, facilities on site. Um, we've got an underground tank that uh, is due, you know, pretty much can't permit it past 2025. Um, so we've had this kind of in the planning stages for a while. We've, we've got a, an engineer designing right now to, to provide a new fueling station right in the, the back of the firehouse here. So it would be two above ground tanks, um, you know, with, with all the appurtenances. So you've got a, you know, dual fuel, gas, diesel, uh, be able to handle the entire fleet. Um, we will have a, a canopy to protect the personnel who are fueling, um, and then all the, the permitting and everything that we had you know, kind of go along with all that. So uh, this is an engineer's estimate at this time, uh, would be the $1 million. Uh, again, that includes a tank with two different types of fuel, uh, canopy, all the dispensers, all new equipment. We're not, we're not going to take anything over from PD that's been there for quite some time. So. What size tanks are these going in? I believe it's there's six, five or six thousand per um, type. So both the diesel and the, and the gas. And it's going to be located at fire. Right. It'd, it'd be in the back where the the back entrance is right now. Okay. Off of Lincoln. Okay. Um, why don't we go through them and then we can circle back with questions? If that makes sense. Um, the next one was the Vets Park. Stormwater. <coughs> so, although it is a, a park, you know, we, we are looking at this from the engineering standpoint. Um, you know, we do have our MS4 permit, uh, which is our separate stormwater permitting um, through DEP. Um, ultimately, comes down from the EPA, but there there is a requirement through the permit for us to to basically disconnect our or reduce our impervious surfaces throughout town. Um, we we do this through the, the planning and zoning in the wetland side when it's applicable to their departments. They do require, it's, it's essentially the first inch of runoff to be kind of captured and treated in a natural way. Um, however, the, the aggregate of that doesn't get us anywhere near 1%. So we're, we're looking at town facilities and where we can kind of get that low hanging fruit um, and disconnect some of the stormwater areas. So um, as part of this project, while we're in there and we, we would have a contractor, we would make all those ADA upgrades that are required as well. So there's, there's some sidewalk and disrepair. Um, there's ramps that, you know, should be relocated. The, the parking lot needs to be restriped um, to make everything ADA compliant. So instead of making this a park project, we're kind of the engineering department's kind of taking the, the lead on this one to make it a more of a stormwater quality upgrade, but you'll get those ancillary benefits at the same time. So is this a, uh, is this a, a, a federal or a state DEP rule as far as the impermeable surfaces? So the MS4 program is, is from EPA that, that trickles down through DEP. Um, so I believe it's every town in the state is required to have, um, well, let, I should take that back. So some of the cities that still have combined sewer systems, they're not included in that, they have their own regulations. But um, this is for separate storm and separate sanitary sewer systems. Those towns are required to comply with this permit. Now, I've, I've been here before asking you guys for some money because it's, it's yeah. one of those unfunded mandate kind of things. Yeah, right? it's an unfunded mandate. It's actually the ones that are separating the water from the, from the, sep, from the sewer 
actually have to do more for the impermeable surface than the, the cities that are combining those systems together? Right, so the combined sewers, all that storm water is running through, the idea is that it's running through the, the treatment plant, so yeah. it is getting treated its own way. Okay. Um, and the storm sewers are really taking on all that, the street wash. Um, you know, right. so it's that first flush that's pretty dirty, so. Okay. Uh, cattle crossing? The cattle crossing right now we have um, Circa out of um, Yukon looking at the cattle crossing. They just had a public meeting uh, not too long ago at the community house. Um, kind of revisiting in 2016 under our coastal resiliency plan what to do with that cattle crossing. So, And that's the Meadow Street? Correct, um, over by the... Meadow Street Eel underneath Pond. the railroad tracks? Correct, yep. Um, so this project, they're, they're looking at it really, we're, we're kind of benefiting from the resilient CT program that was funded through HUD, um, looking at Fairfield, New Haven counties. We're one of the, I think there's either five or six planning projects that they're looking at, really looking at how they can recreate this for other towns within the state. Um, this one was chosen because it's dealing with Amtrak, it's dealing with DOT, it's dealing with flooding issues. So um, this project, they're, they're going to get us through the conceptual phases, work us through kind of those hindrances between Amtrak, get that conversation started with them see what our, our roadblocks are going to be with this project. So we're, we're anticipating going to design with these monies um, to figure out. It, it's, it's From our understanding so far with this design project, this isn't going to be a flood control project. It will control flooding, but it will not remove those areas from, I'm speaking like the Meadow Street Hobson area, will not remove that from the FEMA flood mapping. So you'll still see that on the map, however, as we see all the time with, with high tides, heavy rains, you know, that, that area floods a lot. What we're, we're seeing is when the, the Branford River overtops the banks, that's where the majority of the flooding is coming from, is underneath that cattle crossing. So. Yeah, question? Um, wasn't this on, a, on an agenda one or two years ago, the same thing? I believe I had it in an out year for, um, for the capital program. Yeah, we've talked about in the past the Meadow Street flooding issue. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Meadow, yeah. Flood game? Yeah, so Meadow Street, that's, this is kind of, we're kind of dipping into different pots to try to get this whole thing figured out. We, we've got the Meadow Street reconstruction program yeah. where we planned on um, installing large diameter sewers underneath Meadow Street or underneath the park area to try to kind of contain the flooding a little bit, right? So we got, we got a lot of water, rainwater coming down from the center of town to that one area one pipe that comes out underneath the old Paul's wire rope into the river. So when we got that high tides and the heavy rains, the, the, the water can't, rainwater can't get out. So we'd like to store that underneath either Meadow Street or the park or a combination of the two. That's, that's part of a lot SIP uh, project. That was, I believe, right, I think you guys had funded that. Um, but that's 100%, the construction side is 100% state funded through that lot SIP program. So this, this wouldn't be eligible for the LOTSIP program, we don't believe, and we, we had the opportunity through CERCA and this Resilient CT program to have them at least bring it forward a little bit further. Um, so we can see if we can work that into this, the LOTSIP project. And then the third phase would really be looking at uh, some sort of stormwater pump station um, for when those tides keep coming up that, that we can pump against the tide and, and keep that, that whole area you know, free of flooding. So. Okay. Uh, the trolley bridge. The trolley bridge is an out year. Um, maybe for fiscal 25. Right now, we have a, an engineer on board designing. Um, it's really the the abutments to the trolley bridge, the trolley trail that's down in Stony Creek. Um, with the tides that that flush through there, we've seen those abutments. At least the supports around the abutments start to erode, and they've been eroding for quite some time. So we, we have design engineering right now. This is part of their engineering estimate. Um, this is more of a heads up with the where it's fiscal right. 25. Yep. Okay, the uh, Brantford Point Wharf. So this is, if you remember, uh, a couple years ago, we had a, a partial failure of the seawall mm -hmm. underneath the Brantford Point Wharf um, that you had funded. Um, we got that fixed up and the wooden wharf that was affected above, directly above that section. The rest of the wooden wharf was untouched at that time. Uh, we had an engineer's estimate around a million dollars at that point, and we decided to, to kind of push that off a little bit. 
Um, since then, we were awarded a ship grant through the Connecticut Port Authority, um, which is the $1 million of other state and federal grant money. Uh, there's a 20% match, and we, we added some contingency in there. We, the only caveat to that is we're waiting for the Connecticut Bond uh, Commission to meet. They haven't met in January or February. Um, hopefully that gets funded through the grant that that million dollars comes through. But So that would replace all the rest of the wooden components, including the, the structural piles uh, for the Brantford Point Wharf. Okay. John? I, I thought I read in here that this is for the benefit of the Seamist as well. No, the, the Seamist is out of Stony Creek, so this is the, the Brantford Point over by Park. Oh, okay. Park. Yep. Gotcha. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, next would be capital sidewalk improvement. This Request is a for um, $325,000. Right, so we're, we're this is kind of a continuation of, of what we started last year, uh, which was partially funded through ARPA dollars. Um, we continue to find gaps in the sidewalk network. Uh, we actually currently have a, um, a plan being studied of, of all of our, our gaps in town through a Scrog grant. Um, but these are, the again, that low-hanging fruit that we recognize. There's, there's gaps in the network. There's ADA upgrades that need to be made. Um, there's, I know in, in Stony Creek, um, the association down there had walked the entire um, creek to find uh, deficiencies in the sidewalks. Those were all identified. Um, so we, we do have a number of projects that would deplete that 325 for, for this upcoming fiscal year. And we anticipate with the plan coming out then we would then be able to prioritize some additional projects. So um, whether that goes a full five years or not, I mean, we, I'm sure you guys have been around town, there's a lot of deteriorated sidewalks that need replacement. Um, <coughs> so we're just kind of putting those out in the out years. Uh, moving on to the supply pond bridge replacement. Since we applied for and received a state local bridge grant, uh, which is a 50-50 grant, again pending state bond commission approval. Um, this was on an out year, I want to say the last couple of years. Um, it's that, that what seemingly small bridge that you, you cross between the two supply ponds. Uh, that, that bridge is pretty deteriorated and it turns out it's, it's about 20 feet deep at that point. So it is a, a substantial structure even though it's a short span, but um, kind of trying to take advantage of the infrastructure money that's out there right now. Okay. Um, and uh, so that's really a debt. That's not necessarily it's uh, actually debt in other state and federal funds. And then on, uh, not last but not least, your local traffic authority projects. Oops, so these are um, really unfunded projects that are as a result of, of the local traffic authorities' approval of um, requests that come through. Uh, in the past, we requested $25,000 a year uh, for these projects. And we, we've seen those, the requests kind of drop down a little bit, so we've, we've dropped the, our request down uh, accordingly. So it's quite the number of discrete projects. You manage those with your staff of one, two? Two. Two. Yeah. Two. Good. We're doing well so far. Yeah. A lot going on. Uh, questions from the board? Additional questions with regards to the capital requests? I got about you. Charlie. And going back to the stormwater quality, mm -hmm. you're going to take up imper um, impermeable asphalt and replace it with permeable. Right. So and, oh, oh, what's the read? I mean, where does the, uh, the water go? So it's actually incredible to see in in practice. Um, so the, the pavement itself is fully permeable. So when you, when you see water wash off, and it's, it's just in one section of that parking lot, it's kind of a pilot project that we want to see if we can start introducing um, and finding out what the issues are, the benefits and the, the disadvantages to the system. But um, the water will actually flow through the pavement. It'll just yeah. disappear. Um, and there's, there's a large layer of stone underneath. That's a lot of the cost is attributed to the stone, but it's about you know, almost two feet of stone where the water can then percolate in the ground and any overflow, you know, we've, we've got a small pipe that, that runs in there, an under drain that would take the, the additional water away. So you got two feet of, of stone under? 
Right, clean stone, so that really? you know it's about forty percent voids in the stone. It, that fills up with that. You design it for about the first inch, uh, and then the excess gets taken away in the storm sewer wow. system. Thanks. This MS four applies to governments. Correct. The, the state is is they've been able to kick the can down the road a little bit um, because they're so large. So you know they've they've been given a little bit of a pass. So they're they're not going to start until. I think it's another two years that they're required to, to come up to speed on the permit. Mm. We're doing really well, I gotta say, with compared to some of the surrounding towns and, and a lot of the towns in the state. Um, you know, we, we have been on top of all the requirements so far. But it really only applies to uh, parking lots versus roadways? You, the roadways are, are gonna be more expensive for treatment. That's why we're, we're looking at these you know, I mean, the, the Board of Ed is our next step, is talking to them about, you know, they, they've got vast amounts of parking, they've got students that may be able to take care of some of these treatment options. Um, you've got the education component, but, you know, the, those areas in private, I say private, but the town properties, right. are a lot easier to, to get moving as opposed to roadways, linear roadways. But it wouldn't be a roadway. You, you could use roadways. You, it's just more expensive to find the treatment and the, the space requirements and overhead lines with tree wells and things like that. It, it gets a lot more complicated. We're not there yet. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. They do, they do, they do consider roadways oh. are part of your calculation of the municipality for impervious surface area. So that is something that, so when they're talking about the reduction, an uh, annual reduction, does also kind of, you know, factor in the amount of impervious you have in roads. Right. Now, it's the impervious areas are of the whole town, private yeah, property included. Lots, right. Roofs, doesn't impact your main street reconstruction, though, does it? We've got some LID treatments going. Yeah, who? We have, we have some low-impact development treatments in there, like rain gardens and things yes, like that. Okay. There. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, questions uh, from the Capitol? Um, RTM members, uh, Mr. Frank, do you have a question? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I won't meant to mention before, I'm Frank Tuvel, RTM representative, First District. A uh, couple of questions on some of these capital items, sir. Um, as far as your proposed fleet fueling station, you know, here at the fire station, um, there are towns I know they work out, you know, a plan with a local you know, gas station, you know, for a car that they get, you know, X amount off per gallon. I mean, uh, I mean, would you comment on this project as far as the economics go, please? I'll, I'd have to defer to the maybe finance department and the policies of. Uh, I, I think there's. To, to look at having that provided through uh, a private enterprise, I think there's a lot of complications in terms of, you gotta consider the procurement process, uh, the, the billing, the tracking, uh, as well as what's very important is during a uh, emergency situation, we wanna make sure we have our own supply and adequate supply to meet the needs of the town. So we will not Thank you. Uh, also, sir, if I may, um, I wanted to ask about the cattle crossing design. That there was a conference held last month at the community house, which I attended, and was presented by uh, Yukon. And there was, I don't know, four or five engineers there, and they had huge plans that they'd been working on for several years. And they did state that, you know, they, they talked about this cattle crossing. That was the whole purpose, really, of the, of the uh, conference. They did say that maybe FEMA, if they were asked, they might pay for this project at Cal Crossing. I just wanted to mention that. And thirdly, sir, um, as far as the Trolley Trill Bridge, right now, it's not being asked for this year, but to, you know, we're, tonight we're getting the heads up. Um, that's been there, as you know, for many years. It's very popular, four seasons. People are down there all the time. It's a beautiful walk. And uh, I just wanted to mention that in the past, Tilcon Tomaso has been a great help with that bridge. And so 
possibly in the next year, you know, you could ask them, you know, to help with reconstruction or, or some cash towards the project. And also, uh, it, it was also reconstructed in the past through DEEP. Uh, the money came from the, um, I believe, from the state uh, soil and water fund. So that's another, you know, possibility. You know, but it's a great, you know, bridge. To, uh, it's true. It's about to fall down. It's just concrete. There. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll be looking for, for grants for that project. Okay. For sure. Um, it's just when they may be available and, and what kind of treatments we can. We, we applied for one that was a, a green treatment and it wasn't green enough um, for, I, think, I believe that was through DEP, but. Okay. Thanks, John. Questions? Charlie? Should I follow up on, on that? Do we have a, a grant writer? I mean, and how does the, the narrative get into the grant request? Yeah, we, we don't have a dedicated grant writer per se, but in my department, the, the design engineer um, that we brought on last year, um, very good at, at and aggressively seeking those grants and applying for, for those that we would be eligible for. All right, so. does that person write the narrative as well? Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and that's where you see, you know, the, the ship grant that we received as well as that state local bridge grant. Um, you know, he wrote both of those grants for us. Good. Okay, thanks. Uh, other questions? Yes. Dennis Flanagan, RTM. I have a question on the Branford uh, Wood Wharf replacement. Are we talking about the town dock? Yeah, it would be at, at the, you know, where the project was. Uh, yeah, because that's my question. Didn't we, didn't we redo that dock so many, what, a couple years ago? No, so there was um, a portion of the, oh, the stone seawall underneath the dock that had partially failed. So in order to access that, we had to tear off a portion. So it's that, you know, if, if you're facing the dock, it's that left third or quarter of it that was replaced, um, only because we had to touch it to get down to the, the stone seawall below. And the rest of it we left off because the, the engineer's estimate at the time was a million dollars. We said, all right, well, well, we'll push that down. There's nothing technically wrong with it. It needs to be replaced, but it's not, you know, part of this fail failure in the project that we have. So. Good. Okay. Any other questions of the capital items? Okay. Thanks, John. I think we're all sure. set. Thanks. Appreciate it. Next up is Public Works, page 39. Welcome, Gary. Good evening. Good evening. Total request for the department operating side is two million seven hundred twenty-two thousand two hundred sixty-seven dollars. Increases sixty-four thousand. Uh, Want to hit the high spots on this, uh, Gary? Sure. Um, personnel services really hasn't changed. There's not much of any kind of a change. Um, so I'll move on to. Uh, non-personnel um the increase in uh, uniform and clothing allowance um it's up 14 and a half percent uh it's due to uh increase in uniforms shirts uh added winter jackets um other purchase services other purchase services increase in 19 around 19 percent uh, that increase is basically due to, well, the catch basin cleaning is uh, what we do every year. Uh, we look to clean 1,500 basins a year, um, 2,335 uh, per basin. Um, we're also requesting funding to uh, clean about 400 more in case of storm events, emergencies. Um, this is all the keep up with the uh, MS4 requirements also that John had mentioned before. Um, other ex uh, other increases are uh, just our normal services, precision, precision weather service, uh, GPS monitoring, uh, Beerman services that take care of our, uh, our uh, fuel pump. Um, also an added uh, item is uh, town-wide weed control um, for guardrails around town. Um, also, uh, the supply pond dam. That was the increase in uh, other purchase services. Okay. Um, another uh, 
got seventy five hundred on the tree tree warden. Yeah, tree warden. Um, I'm asking for an increase. Uh, for uh, trying to get another five thousand dollars added for removals, prunes, and uh, also stump removals, um, and an increase of twenty five hundred dollars for soil amendments, soil planting mix and supply since we are a tree city USA town um, we do a lot of street tree planting mm -hmm. and um, we, we, I feel the need to you know we get these trees we we plant them and we have to plant them right and uh, our, uh, we do pretty well we don't lose any tree we don't lose many trees at all so um, but I want to do them properly uh, safety supplies the increase there, uh, there's some increase in first aid supplies, um, a larger increase is for uh, all our guys do tree work. Um, they have to be properly outfitted. So uh, we're looking to get them all, issue them all chaps for protective gear. Uh, they need them and uh, you know, we, we also fit, uh, fit in like a lot of helmets all kinds of you know ear safety protection gear. every all kinds of safety protection um other supplies uh the increase there is in uh bottled water the guys uh, we've supplied the guys with bottled water for you know since i've been here um that increase is uh was quite substantial it's about uh, three thousand seven hundred almost three three thousand eight hundred dollars in a year um Drainage, uh, the cost of pipe has gone up. I'm asking for another five thousand towards the pipe. Ten thousand dollar increase in catch basin components. Um, they have also gone up, um, and also an increase in uh, brick and block and mortar, Portland cement. Um, also. I always feel there's a need to, uh, we're increasing our drainage jobs. When we do road work, uh, road resurfacing, we're replacing a lot of catch bases that needed replacement years ago. So um, we're doing it. And uh, sometimes it means almost a total reconstruction of, of uh, the catch bases. Sure. So um, we, we have our yard fully stocked in that. Um, equipment. The large increase here, uh, we're requesting to buy four new portable handheld radios. Um, we use them a lot. We use them during events, during emergencies. All our equipment, all our trucks have radios, but um, we have what we have now uh, will not be, cannot be refurbished. So they're pretty much obsolete, so we need We'd like to start with four. Uh, the cost of the uh, radios, uh, they're $2,150 each. So you're, you're, you're around $8,600 for four. So that's the increase in the uh, equipment. And what are those, how do those get um, issued? Issued as you seen there, there uh, we, if we have a traffic job or something, okay. The guy we have them all in the shop right. and they they take them at the as needed, you know, okay. and then they go back on charge just as we've always done. But these radios are they're not taking charges anymore. And what's the range of these radios? Uh, it's within the town, they, they got a pretty good range, but we normally use them for uh traffic control. If you're set up on a curve, you need two guys on uh, traffic. Uh, they need to communicate by radio and the emergencies also some a lot of the events too fireworks and right. uh, festival right, right. <laughs> okay um, questions on the operating budget from the board Charlie you got a question yeah Gary can we go back to the uh, what is it, street lights this my understanding is look I know we don't own the poles but we own the supports and the lights so are we going to replace with, say, 7,000 lights, supports, or both? Who said we are going to replace them? Huh? <laughs> Who said we are going to replace them? Uh, that's my understanding. No? No. All right. Then no. What's, we don't, we don't what's the 7,000 for? 
So <laughs> you're, you're, the total request is 353000 for street lighting. That's to pay for the uh, electricity on that? Yeah. Uh, no, but so the <coughs> or, or do you, do you also oh, put so the maintenance in there? Well, so it's a fixed charge based on the type of light. There's like different rates from the utility company. There's no meter on it. Right. So the, the utility company comes out with those rates and maybe, Charlie, you've seen that over the years they've been relamping Frankfurt. At one time we had thought we were going to purchase the street lights, but we never um, never ended up uh, going through. Right, so that's for power. All right. That's like a pass-through to the utility company. Yeah. All right. So it's kind of like the hydrants. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Yep. It's a different analogy, but, uh, but that's... Um, so that's really the cost of the l per light that you have. Yeah, they, they okay. charge because they're not metered as a certain rate depending on the, the, what you have, uh, you know, what right. size of okay. the is, and the utility company charges us a rate. Basically. No, I misunderstood. Okay. Yeah. Um, the only ones we own are the decorative lighting in the center of town. Okay. Gotcha. Other questions from the board? Questions from RTM members or members of the public? You're good on the operating side, Gary, and we'll move to the and the uh, capital side, starting on page 54. And the first request that we have is dock replacement, uh, Marine Five and Sea Mist. That's the $85,000 request for for this year. Sony Creek Wharf. Yeah. So the Sea Mist dock um, has definitely seen better days, uh, and we've and, and actually Marine Fla Marine Five, same thing. They're they're old. Uh, we've been repairing them and repairing them and repairing them over the years. Now we're at the point where the cleats are ripping out, and we don't even have anything good to tie into mm. to make it secure. So um, it's time to replace them. So and, uh, pilings and uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't believe we'll be drilling any rock for these piles. I think there's enough uh, mud in there to to sink these piles, so it'll be cheaper. Um, but figured uh, around fifty-two thousand five hundred for the sea mist. That's a uh, the larger dock of the two, and then about thirty-two five hundred for uh, Marine 5. Marine 5 is, uh, that dock is, well, I should say the boat is oversized for the dock. Right. It's like, you know, it's like yeah. a tank compared to that dock. So uh, it take, they both take beatings on that side. Okay. Um, the storm system, CCTV inspection. Yeah, this is uh, 45000 for uh, fiscal year 24 and another 45000 for fiscal year 25, hope, you know, requesting. Uh, this is to inspect drainage systems in the uh, neighborhood of uh, Side Hill, Victor Hill, Brook, Brookwood Mountaintop Drive, and Heritage Hill Road. Uh, this is to prepare for uh, total road reconstruction. So area. is this a, a contracted service or yeah. what? Uh, who, yeah. who comes in? This is a specialty company that comes e in. And, yes, uh, yes. Uh, we got quotes from Savvy and Son, and um, you know they based it on a day rate, and um, you know they're they're very good. We used them before. Um, I believe it was. Uh, the heck were they used them? Uh, Okay. I think it was Hickory Hill or something. They, they have finished up. They were really good. Okay. Uh, next is the road improvement and resurfacing, 550,000 for uh, approximately how many miles of, uh, of roadway? Probably about three miles, maybe, give or how take. Be, maybe close to three, because uh, it all depends on what we're going to be doing. If it's a mill and pave, it's cheaper. If it's a reclaim, and pave it's going to be more expensive you're paying for grinding the whole road full depth plus base grading it compacting it so it's a it's a bigger project uh mill and pave if the roads aren't that bad and that badly cracked 
um, we can get away with a mill and pave. You're just milling off the top two inches and replacing it with the top two. Um, so it all it all depends really. I don't like to say by miles because it's all different. So um, and now I'm sorry. Now the, you know the cost of asphalt is through the roof. Okay, ADA ramps for twenty thousand. Yeah, like the, it's a five-year plan to. Uh, To replace um, there's 13 ramps here yeah, 13 roughly 13 year. ramps per year ADA compliant ramps um, it's about fifteen hundred dollars per ramp give or take uh, the amount of sidewalk panels you'd have to uh, replace leading to the ramps uh, to achieve the proper grade for ADA compliancy but this is a five-year plan. Uh, line striping, 50,000. Another five-year plan um, to provide epoxy line stripe, striping where appropriate. Um, you know, the lot, epoxy line striping is more durable uh, and has a longer lifespan than uh, latex acrylic. Um, you know, this will help with the traffic calming measures, safety in the town also. Downtown center maintenance for 25000 Yeah, that's remain flat. <coughs> What's up? That's flat. Uh, same. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. No change. Gotcha. Uh, sidewalk repair, 45000 Seawall. Seawall. Oh, Seawall, yeah. thank you. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Nice to get tired. That's just annual repairs, maintenance of <laughs> town owned seawalls. <laughs> yeah. And uh, sidewalk, 65000 Yeah, I'm leaving that flat. We uh, That's just to continue the repairs and replacements. Yeah. Concrete, as, uh, concrete and asphalt sidewalks. And then the. Uh, your apparatus request of two hundred twenty-five thousand. Right, uh, two hundred twenty-five thousand this year, and I don't see an increase uh, probably till twenty-six, in order to keep us um, within that range of. Uh, so. Um, this clear. I, I didn't get to this page in clear eye gov. Does this does it break down what we're buying? No. Well, do you still have that plan? I do have a plan, an apparatus plan. Yeah, yeah I do. Good. Yeah, I mean, the details. Yeah. <laughs> did I submit it? Probably not. I don't know. Okay. So I did. I did. Okay. So you're buying okay. trucks. You're buying a loader. What are you this uh, this year, I'll be specific. This year we're going to buy. Um, we're looking to get another F550 for our small truck, our smaller truck fleet. The small dump? Yeah, small dump. Um, and then um, also we're looking to replace a roll-off for the transfer station. Um, that's probably about 100. It, it'll be used. We're looking for a used, not a new. Um, but that's going to be about 120,000 right there. Okay. And then we'll jump on the large trucks again probably the following year. I think it was uh, 26, 25, 26. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Uh, questions from the board on the capital items? Um, was going to ask a question. Okay, go ahead, Victor. Gary, did you say a roll-off used yeah. is $120,000? Well, we're budgeting for $120,000, just in case. I mean, we've gotten, we are already started getting prices. Wow. But, Seems I mean, steep. You can, yeah, they're expensive. Trucks are up. Right? And you have two out there now? We have two up there now. Two out there yeah. now. Yeah. And those were bought used years ago. Gary, those were bought used years ago, too, I think. Yeah, they were bought year, used years ago. It's, uh, it, it doesn't make any sense to buy new. 
they're just using the yard mostly. Yeah, right? yeah, they're not really truly over the road. You know, right. we're only using them maybe for the festival or something. If they have, if they need a can down at Town Green or something. I mean, they're roadworthy. It's just they don't go out all the time. So I was going to ask you, um, how many miles of road do we have? Uh, probably in excess of 110. Okay, and so we're doing about three miles a year for resurfacing. Um, and uh, what's the plan for Flexmill Road? Well, that was done... That was done, uh, what, seven, eight years ago, something like that. Um, as far as what, widening it? Uh, maybe that might be a good question to start yeah. with, yeah. I'm going to, uh, I'd have to talk to engineering about that. Yeah. I know the situation, a bottleneck's down there, it should have never been. So that was an unapproved road. Correct. Uh, so that was for town aid purposes for years, right? And so is there still a 50 foot right of way th through there? I'd have to check with engineering. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't believe you're anywhere near 50. Yeah. Not down below. Not on the uh, on the south side. Yeah. Okay. Um, questions? Other questions from the board, uh, Victor? <coughs> is it East Industrial Road by Stop and Shop? Is that the name of it? When is that going to start? Uh, Victor, so that we just had our kickoff meeting with the DOT. They finally figured out where the, that funding came down from the federal side. We just had our kickoff meeting with DOT and figured out who's going to run that, those funds. They're kind of having a hard time at DOT on all this funding that's funneling through them. So we're finally going to start on that. Um, we're going to the final design on that. We're hoping for 24 construction. Okay. Uh, question from in the back there, and we really need to use the mic for the responses. Uh, so Frank, could you uh, pass it back to Peter? Thank you. Uh, Pete Black, 3rd District, uh, RTM. The Stony Creek Dock, is that $85,000 just for the planning or is that for the construction? Uh, it's uh, in the budget. It's listed as planning. I don't know if that was just a misprint. Construction. No, this is reconstruction. So that the answer is construction, and I think it might have been a typo on the, or the wrong okay. category. Is that, is that correct? It says, uh, does say planning, um, It's but it is, uh, Gary, it is for the actual work for the to actual be done. For replacement. Because yeah. you've already planned for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Th thank you. That's reassuring, by the way. <laughs> sure, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, uh, ma'am. Uh, Tracy Everson, RTM of 5th District. Uh, regarding the Stony Creek Dock, the commercial vehicle, uh, vehicles, boats, that use that um, yes does the town get any income or charge a fee for the use of that dock since there are three sightseeing boats that use that dock uh, I think Jamie could or can you answer that yeah, question Jamie the the, uh, there is for <clears throat> we do not charge a fee for the commercial activity in terms of those who utilize the dock to access the islands but for the um, commercial boats that dock down there and utilize the town docks, we get a, we do charge uh, a, a fee, a rent to use the utilize those. The slips. And uh, can you tell us what that fee is? Would those uh, boats get charged? You know, I have to. We, uh, we, can, we can get it for I'll you. I'll get it for you. I'll be sure to bring it when I do the RTM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, other questions? Frank, you had a question? You just have to get your microphone back. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to add to what our first selectman just said, there's an ordinance that we have, you know, the RTM. Uh, it, was, it was updated, I don't know, 10 years ago, and I, it's a very, I don't know, it's like $1,000 it's like a, a, a year for the permit. So okay, that, thank that you. Has to be looked at. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, other questions on the capital items for public works? If not, we're, we'll move on. Thank you, Gary. You're all set. Uh, next is the uh, 
Docs, whoop, Gary, I guess you got to stick around. Uh, docs and recreational facilities. <laughs> Page 48. You're not getting away so quick. Um, Page 48, and the request for docks and recreational facilities is $21,571, increase of $1,129, um, $129 increase in part-time uh, help, and $1,000 for floats and docks. Yes, yeah, uh, the increase is basically due to uh, an increase in... Uh, labor to pull the dock certain docks out every year and put them back in the water um, now you hire a crane or you use your own equipment on that uh no we hire a guy with a piece of equipment okay questions on that budget Where, where's that is that stony creek as well or it stony um, creek and Bradford Point. <coughs> mostly it's stony creek and Bradford point yeah right um those are the two two locations um other questions Questions from the RTM members of general public? If not, I think we're good, Gary. There's no capital items on that. It's included elsewhere, so thank you. Right. Next up is uh, Municipal Government Buildings, page 27. Welcome, Brian. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I just want to highlight a couple things. You see increase in the utility line item at 6.8%, which represents what the utility companies are charging. Um, with the addition of the new animal shelter and the old BOE building, that also adds to the increase. Next, the uh, projected increase for my fuel oil is 16.3%. Um, that's where we're getting charged by the oil companies. Um, with Canoebrook currently being mothballed, we should see a considerable savings for next fiscal year. And finally, the increase in my purchase services of 5.8 is a calculation of the rising building material cost and labor costs. So the request for municipal buildings um, is one million one hundred sixty three thousand one thirteen increase of forty seven thousand six thirty two and uh, you basically highlighted the increases of uh, forty eight thousand seven twenty five yeah. questions on this budget the operating budget uh, and okay Question. questions from the uh, RTM members Frank Mr. Chairman, uh, just a question I mean I don't have the detail you know, as was um, stated earlier, uh, so would you please explain um, the cost? It says purchased services, repairs, and maintenance in the amount of uh, $381,000, an increase of um, almost $21,000. Would you please explain that? Thank you. Um, yes. Um, last year I did not have control of the animal shelter because they were, they were being dope. This year now, this coming budget, I repair all, I have all the preventive maintenance contracts, HVAC contracts, generators, um, utilities, and also I'm, I'm just got the old board of building. So that's also something I have to pay for as well. That's an everyday. That just Thank you. And how many buildings are you maintaining now? 20. 20? 20 or 21. 20 buildings. Question. Charlie? <laughs> like a lot of these items that you, you include the, the cost for electric. Now we have the field, you know, the, that we're generating our own power. Mm -hmm. Do you know what percentage, I mean, those that, you know, that field is that field adding to our power source? That field goes yeah, to the uh, that's, so that's, a, <clears throat> that's a virtual net meter agreement that we have, so it's not tied to these buildings. It's actually tied to a meter at the wastewater treatment plant. Oh. So <laughs> we probably net somewhere about sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year in savings oh, you know, through that. Yeah, you know, we're netting the difference between uh, the the cost that we have to pay the developer Tesla, uh, who owns and operates and 
uh, maintains that solar array and between the, the uh, credit that we receive off our Eversource bill, we net the difference. And that, that's been trending, as I said, I think around that 60 to 70. Okay, so all the solar power goes to one source. It goes into the grid. Uh, oh, it so does. Every, yeah, it goes into the grid. So we're paying for every kilowatt hour that it, they put into the grid at a fixed rate, or I think we had a 20 year agreement, or obviously a number of years in the agreement. And then for every kilowatt hour that is put into the grid off of one of the meters down at the wastewater treatment plant, Eversource gives us a monetary credit oh, off our okay. bill. And we, so the, the, the savings to the tower, that is the, the, the net difference of the, the credit from the uh, what Great, thanks. Okay, other questions on the uh, municipal building uh, operating budget? Okay, and then if not, we'll move on to the capital items, page 39 to 41. First is the vehicle replacement, Brian, $7,500 to the sinking fund. Yes, that's uh, to replace the pickup that I'm currently driving, hopefully within the next five to six years, we'll have enough money in there to get it. The truck is uh, at 138,000 miles right now. Um, so I've been adding a little bit every year. And when do you plan on replacing it? Probably within another four or five years. Okay. And that's your only truck, your only vehicle? That's the only one I drive, yep. What is it? Is it a uh, Ford F-250 with a Redding body on it. Yep. And, a, uh, and it also has a plow package. The what package? Plow, plow. package. Oh, plow package, thanks. Okay. And next is the um, exterior and interior painting projects. $15,000 a year. Yes, uh, that's, I have, right now I have an or, uh, orchard house planned to be painted this summer and um, one or two sides of the town hall. Okay. Um, future energy savings project. Yes, that's there to, um, we have a lot of rev uh, older condensing units throughout town and that's my plan starting with the orchard house um, start replacing those and um, there may be other ones throughout town but I'm every year I'm knocking off a couple yeah right now the orchard house is in need of replacement what's the lease on that Jamie is there, is there a lease on the orchard house uh, it's just no I mean, we have a lease, but it's, we don't receive. You don't receive dollars, dollars yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was a dollar a year. A dollar a year, yeah. and I believe we're responsible for the exterior and any capital improvements. Yeah. Okay. Um, next up is the new electric vehicle. Is that, is that yours, too? <laughs> that's not me. No, you, that's it. You could have gotten that. You should have snuck that one. Does it kind of go back to your condensers? Yes, sir. I mean, how many are you going to be able to get? You know, for twenty-five grand. Yes. Of how many? Uh, at, the, at the Orchard House, there's at least three or four. And we're talking twenty-five thousand. Yeah. But now remember, this this, this is fun. It's a it's a future energy project throughout the town, not just the Orchard House. It's everywhere. Okay. What's the balance in there, Jim? Uh, a trick question. We have to get back on that. All right, all right. Yeah. That's, so there, this is sinking fund that we've been putting into yes. on an annual basis. So there's actually funds in there. But what we're not seeing here is the ex the anticipated expenditures. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's the, that's a piece that we could talk about. But that's we're not seeing that portion that we have seen in the past. So. Okay. Uh, other uh, questions on the capital uh, requests here from the board. Or from the Arcade members of general public. If not, you're all set, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is animal control. Page, uh, we'll call it the 67 or 68 of the budget.
57. Welcome, Laura, in your new building. Hi, everybody. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. So I don't have much for you. Um, That's okay. Are you, are you there yet or no? <coughs> yes. Um, we're on page 67, 68, and it looks like you're looking for 450000 106. Yep. Uh, which includes a transfer in of, uh, is that the entire transfer in, Jim? Uh, operating transfer in from the general fund is 199000 I'm asking for less than last year. You are. I'm proud of you. Thank you. That's Seven, something. $7,800 less. That's, That's something. good. It's a good, <laughs> good trend on that, or a good, uh, good example. So, um, and really just a small increase in the requested uh, uh, budget yeah. that you could see. And um, any other highlights you'd like to tell us about? Um, so we're hoping to have a grand opening for the building. Great. Um, April 24th is looking like. You're going to smile and say yes to that. <laughs> so yeah, we, um, we've been looking for a date and we're thinking Monday, uh, April 24th at noon. We're hoping to have all of our furniture in then and hoping that all the signage will be done by that point. So um, those are the couple of things we're waiting on. Okay. But we're open to the public right now, 11 to 3. So if people want to come in, we have sort of a soft opening that we're doing so that people can come in and still adopt. Okay. That's great. And um, so are there questions on the operating budget request here from Laura? Purchase services. Purchase services. Jack, Victor, you're asking a question? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Now, how does it come up to or requesting 4,000? Well, last year you, you were in the old building. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah, so we're, you know, being in the new building, we have a lot of new equipment and things, and um, we just don't know what the future is going to look like, so we're trying to prepare a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other questions on the operating mm -hmm. side? Uh, questions from the public or uh, our team members? Peter, uh, you just want to grab the mic? Uh, thank you, uh, Joe P. Black, 3rd District RTM. This is probably more for Jim, but uh, with the expansion, um, there was a fair amount of gnashing of teeth uh, north of here. Um, I could hear it in Short Beach regarding their contribution. So um, what's the, any more news on uh, North Brantford's contribution and the revision of the operating agreement and contributions to capital accounts yeah currently there is uh, no update on that they do have a, uh, a new town manager uh, you had mentioned about the the uh, opening I think what some of our thinking is to basically once it's fully up and running and operational is to have them visit uh, and then uh, have them approve the agreement now again I'm going to emphasize as I have in the past that we have a current agreement with them that's uh, less favorable to our uh, northern neighbor. So, uh, you know, it's essentially trying to convince them that this is a, a good arrangement for them. Uh, the other aspect to this is in terms of billing them, uh, one of the aspects of this that still remains outstanding is that we haven't uh, issued the debt for that project. So that would be a key component of the amount that they would that they would actually pay. So we haven't we're on a per dog basis rather than a per capita basis. So that was part part of it was where were the animals picked up from, and then it was going to switch to a bit of um, yeah yeah. By by way of background, the the, the original agreement as it related to capital items was uh, uh, in practice probably a little bit of. Uh, unwieldy in terms of, of like pet censuses and those could change over time. Uh, what North Brantford had uh, discussed with us uh, a few years back on the operating side, which seemed very, very equitable, is to uh, charge them on a net basis. So when we were uh, doing the appropriations for the animal shelter, I think I said in one of my memos that, you know, it, 
it would seem to be a disadvantage to them to charge them gross, uh, given the tremendous fundraising that Laura and her committee did even during COVID years. And so, uh, so they didn't get the benefit of that. And uh, then there was an election in North Brantford. They have a new town manager. I, I think on the plus side, uh, quite honestly, is their town finance director has served in North Brantford, actually even longer than I've served in Brantford. So uh, we probably have uh, easily over uh, 55 years between us. So uh, he and I talk occasionally on a lot of these things, and, he, and he's still aware of it. I think, Jamie, you may have reached out to, uh, to the town manager. So, uh, And I think it's important to underscore that you know, this isn't breaking new ground with North Brantford. We share a, uh, a probate court, and we also uh, bill them for their uh, use of the uh, the treatment plant. In which case, you know, they are funding uh, their share of the debt service. So, uh, you know, we're not going any place. They're not going any place. I think uh, one of the elements of this that we talked about uh, when that appropriation was was made, uh, and it was a point that was made at the time, was essentially that. In a worst case scenario, if North Brantford, you know, pulled out, which they can pull out as well, uh, they could pull out over the life of the bonds, would the town do the project anyway? And, uh, you know, I think that there was also probably some gnashing of teeth at that committee meeting also, but uh, essentially uh, the town came down on, uh, on going forward with this. So, uh, so that is still an outstanding item. Uh, it's one I'd like to close out at some point in the next year or so, but uh, currently it's uh, it's still an open item. But again, I want to underscore, we do have an existing agreement, and it's in their best interest to uh, to make to uh, accept the amendment that we've offered them. So, All right, so we'll stay tuned. Thank you, Jim. Um, other questions? Uh, if not, uh, you have no capital requests? How about all right, thank you. Good luck. Take care. Next is uh, Solid Waste Management and Recycling, page, 70, uh, page 41. 41 for the operating budget. Total request of uh, operating budget of four million nine hundred four four million seven hundred ninety three thousand three hundred fifty eight dollars increase of one million one ninety nine. Um, do you want to hit the, the high spots on that? I'd appreciate it. Sure. So um, last time I spoke with you was uh, late January, at which point we just received uh, bid responses to our RFP for curbside collection and recycling processing. The indications at the time were very favorable that our increase would be low. Um, in fact, through review of the bids, um, it became clear that the RFP and the services we sought uh, were not actually included in the bids that we received. So an extensive negotiation period began to clarify um, the intention of the bidders um, to achieve response to what services the town actually wants to procure. I think I can confidently say that the negoti negotiation period is coming to a close. Um, and during that period of time, we have prepared a budget which is based on uh, the best information that we received in writing from the bids and obtained through uh, communication and negotiation with the two finalist responders. Um, the overall outcome indicates the need for um, $902,000 of increased cost for refuse and recycling collection. Mm -hmm. um, we still intend to move toward automated collection and uh, to move our recycling processing to what would be referred to as a single stream 
<clears throat> or better probably referred to as no sort recycling. Um, the comparison to maintain, so, so the curbside collection essentially, um, it represents an 80.4% increase for the budget line item 544500. Um, but that includes both collection and the intended processing of recyclables. Um, the increase in the curbside collection service is, is approximately $632,000. Out of that 902? Yes, which is, I believe, a... I'm going to say a 61% increase. Are the cans in here? Um, the cans are not in here. Didn't, where, where are the cans? The cans are in the, the uh, sinking piece? fund appropriation, okay. which was the initial year was approved right. using ARPA funds, right. and then there's an right, intention right. to use $200,000 a year to fund the sinking fund up to year eight. Okay. So about a 61% increase for curbside collection, and I will remind you that that's a 61% increase against the current year. The current year is the fifth year of a service that was bid in December of 2017. Yes. And the condo rebate is um, just tied to that as well. Yes, as costs go up, the rebate goes up. Got it. Um, so maybe we ask, I think the rest of these are de minimis, so mm. maybe um, questions from the board with regards to, to this um, this budget, and particularly mm. that the recycling costs and collection costs. A question. Go ahead, uh, Eric. Yes. July 1st is still the starting date. July 1st, if, the contract ends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we are anticipating moving to a new provider who has assured us that they have the uh, vehicles and equipment available. And we have a sh we've convinced ourselves um, that the manufacturer can provide the proper number of carts, um, significant not significantly but meaningfully in advance of that date. And that's two carts per household. Two carts per household. Right. Excluding the, the uh, condos. Excluding the condos. So it's all the it's just the residential street pickups. Correct. And um, that's all going to be delivered. In June, uh, we have spent a significant amount of time negotiating the curbside collection recycling processing contract, and simultaneously working on um, achieving uh, the best available pricing to obtain the carts. We're very close to entering the final negotiations on the principal service. Um, we have a strategy uh, being developed to actually procure the carts but we are not near the drop dead date to obtain the cards. And so the worst case is what would happen if you don't have the proper equipment at as July 1st with the new contractor? Um, well, a contingency, we have not written a contingency, but the service, provi the service provider that we would intend to work with could still collect um, the non-mechanical carts until the carts were put in service. Gotcha. But delivery of the carts is, is not, not particularly uh, our major threshold. Okay. So you got your hands full. Is, we, we have our hands full. <laughs> and how does this impact the transfer station? Um, I would say minimally. Um, you know, we'll still, the, the trash will still be delivered to the transfer station. Right. Um, we're implementing the trash transfer contract um, in a separate order. And who, who picks up the trash? Is this going to be the same contractor the that does both? Trash and recycling will be picked up on an automated basis. The trash will be delivered to the transfer station. We're negotiating that that's, that's hauling can, that's, contract. That's can number one. That's right. can number one. Right, and then can number two. Can number two, is, instead is of a small blue bin, right, right. will be a mechanical cart that will still go to the transfer station and into roll-offs, into trailers. 
and then those trailers will be hauled to the recycling factory. Yeah. What other towns have this uh, same uh, arrangement going on? Um, most other towns have the same arrangement going on. Other questions? Yeah. Charlie? Oh. I think you told us once, and I forgot. Yes. Well, what are the size of the containers? Um, there are the standard container is ninety six gallons. It's huge. The current recycling is twenty two, I believe. Well, the 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 industry standard cart toter is ninety six gallons. Right. There are wheeled toters available at sixty four gallons, and there are wheeled toters available at thirty two gallons. Um, we are going to get examples of those carts from the manufacturer and place them at strategic locations around town for people to get an idea of how big these carts would be and we can get a handle on whether or not uh, we need to order more than one size. Right, the so benefit of a bigger container is that if we ever decide to reduce collection frequency to less than once a week, mm -hmm. we would already own the containers and the residents could store more than one week's of material in a larger container. All right, so you're gonna poll the taxpayers to no, what size? We're no, we're going to provide some examples and receive feedback, probably informally. Again, we have not really focused on that project yet. The focus has been on the multi-million dollar collection contract and recycling processing contract, but um, we have it in our sites. Is it confidential of the last two are? I'm sorry? Is it confidential as to who the last two bidders are? No, it's public information. The, the, the two bidders are uh, Schweitzer Waste Resources, which is our current service provider and um, Bazudo Refuse Services oh, doing business was, as John's. I thought it was Finkelby. No, no, no. they've been purchased. Um, so Bazudo doing business as John's, which provides the similar service yeah. for North Brantford and is based in North Brantford. Will we still be having um, yard, you know, branches and all that pickup as well? We still won't be having yard waste and leaf pickup. We're going to modify the frequency Okay. Um, and we have pulled that out of the curbside collection scope of work and we are going to be writing a, an RFP for um, leaf waste pickup uh, with a new approach to be initiated for the fall pickup. There will still be, the current service provider has that responsibility for the spring. Okay, will we still use, you know, some neighbors use the paper? I don't know. Probably. Okay. Probably okay. still the paper. Yeah. Yeah. Paper? That's okay. That's industry normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions, Charlie? You know, things are pretty tight here, aren't they? In what respect? I mean, uh, how long is the current provider would he extend his, you know, his pickup? Because it seems to me like you're going to go a month or two beyond. We will negotiate that with the best interests of the yeah, town. It just seems like a lot of big, you know, big change coming in. Absolutely. Uh, like in, you know, three months. Yes. Okay, other questions on the operating side? Questions from RTA members? Uh, you pick up the mic. Um, sure. Thank you. Uh, Ed Preet, RTM representative from the 6th District. I just want to clarify the, the um, containers. Um, what I heard you say is there's three different sizes, 96, yes. 60, and 32. Yes. Are the residents going to have a choice on what they want, or are the residents going to put feedback and then the town is going to order one size? Um. And the reason I ask, I mean, we, we've got a senior population of around 40% of this town. I can't see them carting a 96-gallon <laughs> uh, container up and down yeah. the driveway. One thing I can say is I, I have been speaking with a lot of residents about that and uh, it is obviously on the radar that it is a larger uh, elderly population but some that I've spoken with even said that they may be able to leave the larger bin at the end of their driveway and possibly create their own transfer station, transfer station to say. 
So that is one option with the large. So the town will be ordering just one size? No. No. <laughs> no the, the, um, we have not focused on that project yet. We've been working on the contract that's in. Um, the, it, it is, we recognize that the residents are our customers. And we want our customers to be happy. And we're spending a lot of their money. Um, we're making a big change. Um, the convention in other municipalities is to have one size container, 96 mm -hmm. gallons. We think some of the re some of the commissioners believe that's pretty large. It takes up a lot of space. Most users leave those large containers outside. They don't put yeah. them in their eyes. Um, the the prospect of customizing the size to the resident makes delivery of 17,000 containers a, a more significant part. Um, the, um, pro forma budget that we considered in, in the overall cost of the transition uh, included, a, I don't know, maybe a thousand of each cart at the smaller size specifically intended um, for elderly residents. Um, the, we have not made any plans to do a um, you know, call and response on what size anybody wants to work. <laughs> the, the expectation could be, you know, again, we need to spend some time on this, but we're spending time on something else, um, might be to provide the mid-size container, and if a resident actually wants more capacity, they could buy us. So it's a work in progress. It's right? a work in progress. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. Any thank other you. questions on the operating budget? Uh, if not, we'll move on to the capital, which is on page 72. And uh, 72, that is your um, the, the equipment fund, the request of 200000 so in late January, the sinking fund was established. Um, and this would be the first year after establishment of the fund, um, consistent with the plan expressed in late January. In the first year, we would direct $200,000 um, of budgeted appropriations into the sinking fund <coughs> and maintain our anticipated uh, maintenance funding of 60 grand. Okay, questions on the capital? Request 200,000. 200, okay, and questions from uh, RTM members, the general public? If not, uh, you're all set. Uh, Paul and Tyler, good Thank luck. You. Keep us posted. Thank I'm you. sure uh, the artist's got some challenges. We need luck. We're not lollygagging. No, I get it. I get it. <laughs> we, have, we understand. <laughs> Take care. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next is we're going to move on to the recreation department, page 46. Uh, the next several budgets come under the purview of the RTM Ways and Means Committee. Okay. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Dale Hello. and Alex and Paul, welcome. Hi, everyone. On our operating uh, budget, <clears throat> uh, the top half under personnel services uh, is contractual obligations. Um, we did have a, a reduction in accrued payroll expense because there's not an extra day uh, this season. And also, we had a, a reduction of $650 uh, longevity employee had left. Uh, so that was a reduction of $650. And on our operating, I kind of follow what Brian had said. Brian Joni had mentioned his was about 5.8% with some of the operations uh, going forward. Usually in our operations, we've been, um, had a lot of goose eggs as much as we can, but uh, due to uh, the electric, um, electric and also gas and some water, which is irrigation that we do to 13 different uh, fields throughout town, uh, we increased that a bit. And also, 
in grounds repair and maintenance, we did the same. If you look back in the 21, 22, we had spent uh, close to 209,000. Uh, our budget is 180. Uh, I've increased it this year, 10,000 to about 190. Uh, we're going under. We're going out to bid uh, for contracts right now uh, for the next year. Our last contract uh, for landscape areas throughout town was um, actually a three-year contract with two additional one-year contracts. So we're out to bid for that. Uh, we're also looking to uh, put some quality mulch down um, in some of the areas where uh, before we did use some of our, the transfer station mulch at time, but it didn't work out as well. Um, it was really good for compost when we use that uh, on some of our fields, but not as uh, good in our gardens. It kind of it uh, helped uh, help the weeds uh, grow even more. So uh, that was the reason for our increase and a total increase of 2% on our operating. So there's a total request on the operating side of 1,271,891, increase of 25,000, 531,000% increase. Uh, are there questions <laughs> on the operating budget from Rec, Rec Department? I have one more uh, comment, comment, I'm sorry. Uh, out of the uh, operating that you mentioned, um, $129,000 on the operating side uh, is specifically uh, coming from the foot trust on the operating side. Just so you know, this year so we it's did. So a revenue item for $129,000 on, on the operating side. side. Right. right. So they kick in that much? Yes. <laughs> Plus some of the capital. Yeah, we're, which we'll get to. Okay. Guess, yeah. Okay, thanks, Alex, for that clarification. Questions? Uh, yes. Yeah. Alex, Mary? do you have any state or federal grants coming in that are consistent? I mean, you know, are, are they just one time shots for programs or activities and something that comes under your jurisdiction? Yeah, I'm going to let Dale talk about that. I'm going to put her on the spot <laughs> because uh, she does a great job with some of the. Uh, just to give you a, a quick one, we did. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you know this, but we run Damascus Cemetery in Brantford. It's on our side. And uh, we wrote a small grant uh, just recently for a few thousand dollars that we did. We did garner, so we're just waiting for the reimbursement on that right now. It was actually closer to 5,000. Um, and last year, we had uh, we received many grants from uh, some of the community foundation helps us a lot with some of our scholarships and also some of our camps. But I'm going to let Dale talk a little bit about uh, another uh, opportunity we had last year that we're doing this year also. Yes, yeah, so we got a grant for $58,500 from the, um, the state of Connecticut for the enrichment. And we're applying again this year to help offset some of the operating costs of our camps. What, what's the purpose and the use of the money? So it helped with camps last year? With the salaries? Yep, the overhead. Yep. It doesn't come out of the operating budget. It comes out of the program funds. So does that reflect in your regular wage and salary or seasonal? Yes. What do you, what do you account for that expense? No, that's in the special. You do it out of special. Special, 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 special fund, isn't it? You do it special fund, but you, you did write in for salaries. So it goes it, in special funds? It goes into a special project right. fund and it's a grant fund. So you won't see those in your, their operating budget. Okay, um, other questions or comments <clears throat> on the operating request here? Uh, question from RTM members or uh, general public? If not, we'll move on to the capital requests, which I believe start on page 63. And uh, first is a vehicle replacement. Um, yeah, I just... 35,000? Right. Um, can I talk about it overall, and then I'll go over that, Joe, if that's sure. okay? Sure. Yeah, so uh, in front of you, there's a, a request of uh, $290,000 um, in capital, which is a big reduction from last year in our capital. Um, but uh, again, I wanted to reiterate that uh, $150,000 of the two ninety dollars is also... Um, is from the uh, excuse me, one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars is from the foot grant. So, one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars of the two ninety is all from the foot grant that we talked about. Um, so, when you add both of those numbers together, it was 
over three hundred thousand, three hundred four thousand dollars that we received this year. We normally receive a couple hundred thousand dollars, uh, but we um, we've been successful the last couple of years. Uh, we, we hope to continue to do that. Uh, the first selectman and finance director uh, and I have worked with the Foot Trust, and uh, uh, you know, in the last seven years, um, we have garnered close to over a million dollars uh, from the foot trust to make some major improvement down improvements down there as you have seen um, but getting back to the uh, so just out of those dollars um, I know Joe mentioned about the vehicle replacement uh, foot park clay tennis court renovation was for twenty five thousand dollars and also the foot park basketball court renovation for 150 for a total of 175 that again is non-tax dollars uh, Joe mentioned uh, the vehicle replacement of $35,000, and you'll see it going on for a couple of years. We just retired a Dodge Ram uh, that we got actually through Foot Park Trust when we took it over seven years ago. It's a 2010. Um, uh, we've gone through a couple uh, <coughs> remakes on, on the vehicle, and uh, uh, we just tried to uh, fix uh, the bed just recently. It's all rusted out underneath, so... Uh, it, that vehicle is going to auction. Uh, we also have a couple other vehicles, small uh, pickup trucks and a Zuzu, which is over 22 years old, uh, which we'll be utilizing that for some of the trash this year. And also we have another one that we keep down at Brantford Point that's a Ford Ranger that's uh, 20 years old. So uh, we're looking to replace that Dodge Ram truck this year. And then moving forward, uh, we're looking to replace uh, those other trucks as in sequence so so is this included uh, this information included in the clear dot in your narrative in the uh, in the uh, application in the clear dot gov yes i have i have addendums to there from when that's i sitting in that's sitting in there uh catherine i don't believe you put addendums in there not addendums the but i meant uh all right i'm sorry pdfs pdfs I, I know you did some pdfs in the operating okay. yeah i don't i'm not sure Okay, so again, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, I, I do have it, but okay, it so is there, but somewhere. That's okay. The so the somewhere is not necessarily in front of us, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no. so I'm, you know, looking here, and then I'm looking oh. there, and I, but I, I, I am listening at the same time. So, um, but we may want a little more detail at some point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So if you. Um, um, so, what else do you need to cover on the Capitol oh, for us just, tonight? It's, um, that's that's part. Yeah, the other part is um, is you'll see uh, three line items down below, which yeah. uh, been annual. They're twenty thousand dollars each for uh, Parks Tree Removal Program, Fence and Replacement oh. Basketball. They've been uh, they've been ongoing, and that came out uh, for a total of. Uh, Two hundred ninety thousand for that. Yeah. And so when we look at what's here in this, and some of this is some of the um, requests are actually for out years, so that's where it's it gets a little tricky. But for this, uh, on page seventy three of the the budget book, you can actually um, back here you could actually see the uh, the two hundred ninety thousand kind of in one shot there, and um, uh, and so then you've got. Why don't you touch on yeah. the tree pruning? Uh, so the tree pruning program is uh, throughout the parks. Uh, we've, if you go back to the years before, we uh, utilized those dollars uh, to do different. So many uh, trees that have had uh, fungus and disease and yeah. pruning and takedowns, uh, where some of them have fallen down to some of our storms uh, through all the parks. So. Uh, Every one of our parks in town, we try to assist that. We started this program at least probably five years ago or so. And um, sure, okay. And but uh, fencing, where's the fencing? Fencing the same situation too. That gives us uh, twenty thousand dollars to do any fencing repairs or additions uh, during the year. Yep. Uh, for a gate uh, at all of our parks, as along with. Um, our basketball tennis court renovation, which uh, we usually rotate like this year. Just to give you an example, we're doing uh, Bayview Park in Stony Creek, 
and that alone just there for doing the, the basketball court, just restriping and filling the cracks is a little over $10,000. That, that that, that's out right now. Okay. So we utilize those dollars. But we've had, these have been ongoing. I know it's a little bit different from before. Yep. Uh, from what we had. Again, tax, tax dollar wise, I did mention it was 175 from the foot trust, but right. it's $115,000 by tax dollars in the capital. Okay, thanks, Alex. So, uh, how many parks are you maintaining right now? 20 altogether. I mean, there's five major parks, but 20 different properties 20 throughout properties. town yeah. and fields right. and little you know, inlets and stuff like that, cemeteries. Commissioner, anything you'd like to add? No, um, we feel it's a pretty tight budget. And the capital side of it, uh, as Alex said, these uh, four ongoing programs have really uh, done the job for us. That we, uh, we keep the ma maintenance up, especially tree pruning and, and uh, uh, field renovations, et cetera. So we're not coming, we don't want to come in with a big number. So we're kind of, we do it on an ongoing basis. Okay. Dale, anything you'd like to add? Okay. Questions in the capital, Charlie? Alex, uh, could you go over again? Foot Family Trust is going to kick in how much for capital and how much for operating? 175 for capital and 129 for operating. Okay. And now, can you use the 175 anywhere you want for capital? No, I have to write a, I write a grant every year. Yeah. Oh, I mean, and you should have to use it in two specific places like for fencing one and new tennis courts in the other specifically how i wrote the grant out so he's got one for the, the tennis courts for twenty five thousand, and one for the basketball court of 150. okay and i did mention to the board of finance um, to bring you back the last time i was here to make all those transfers in capital i mentioned that one of the ways we're trying to go is with this post-tension um, courts and they cost close to $125,000 to do and I think we have to go that way in the future because even all these capital projects that we've done asphalt is not the way to go anymore most communities are going to post tension uh, we're going to try it at Foot Park to see how successful it is um, just today I, I, I we just opened up uh, Veterans Park which has never been completely redone we just continue to do the cracks uh, we have one already that just came back from last year, which will probably cost a few thousand dollars to fix to make it safe to play. So um, it's just the weather up here uh, that doesn't. In a lot of communities, uh, as you'll hear too also, I talked about pickleball courts. Well, we have pickleball courts both at Foot Park and both at Vets Park. Uh, we just lined them this past year up at at uh, part, it's a, it's a, a big and ongoing uh, sport that's out there. So we've given them opportunities to play both tennis and pickleball on the same court. Eventually, we're going to look to have some separate pickleball courts on their own. We've been looking towards that. That's our 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 forward plan going forward. Thanks. Okay. Other questions in the capital, Jim? Yeah. Well, we just looked it up in the uh, the system. Uh, there were no like attachments. There were um, conversations. I think that's what you so. So they won't print in your book. All right. Okay. So, if you want something to print in the book, you have to send it as an attachment. Okay, but those are things we could work. Through. Yeah, exactly. Yes, but to refine the presentations. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. I knew um, there was something in there. <laughs> questions from the uh, general public or RTM members with regards to the capital request. Okay, I think we're all set. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Take care. Next up is uh, Parks and Open Space Authority, page 61. Already uh, includes a uh, transfer in from general fund, I believe, of 26800 Um yeah. Welcome, Rich. Thank you. Good evening. Total request on your budget is 69887 which I mentioned includes 26800 from uh, general fund, same as prior year. And uh, you've got a few increases, Rich, on your uh, expenditure side. Um, you can briefly hit those if you wish. 
Yeah, well, basically, if you remember the last couple of years, I've kept it pretty <coughs> stable. Sure. Uh, this year, I've increased a little bit, one, because of inflation, but uh, for the last couple of years, I've also had to come and do transfers from, you know, other supplies and capital outlay into uh, repairs, maintenance. And there's about two or three items which we've since identified that are going to be ongoing, uh, things such as uh, line painting in the su uh, supply ponds, uh, treating supply ponds for algae and invasive plants, that type of thing. And when I add those up, that's around $15,000. So I'm, I'm sort of putting that into the, uh, uh, the top line, the uh, repairs and maintenance. So. Gotcha. Um, so that's the area. Uh, the total of 19,500 includes those types of things. Correct. Exactly. Questions from Richard on the on the operating budget. Questions from RTM members or members of the public. Um, if not, we'll go to page 48 of the capital request. Request of 66,000. That's correct. Um, again, this is basically going to infrastructure. And one of the big projects we'd like to do is at the supply ponds. Years ago, there was a pole bridge uh, across Pisco Brook below the dam that got washed away decades ago. Uh, we'd like to replace that. That would provide a very nice uh, loop trail around the lower supply ponds. Uh, and in conjunction with that, in, improved or installed uh, uh, two small parking areas, one on Short Rocks Road and uh, redo the one on Chestnut, North Chestnut. Um, very similar to the pole bridge that we just did this past year at Tisco Brook, which has been extremely successful. Um, <coughs> Tisco Brook Preserve, it's just basically uh, regrading the trails uh, this is sort of a leftover from a few years ago when the ATVs were running crazy. They did major, major damage, and we have to really get in there and just sort of regrade it and flatten it out, get rid of all the uh, wet spots and what have you, and at the same time uh, install some uh, boardwalks over some main, main areas. Um, Branford, uh, the quarry, is redoing the quarry parking lot. That's been an annual problem. The folks at the quarry have been great. Every year they come down with some gravel and you know, with a uh, basically an I-beam and just spread it around. Uh, but they keep it flat so it doesn't drain and they don't compact it. So within a few weeks or months, there's just major puddles again. So I have a contractor that can be an estimate to go in there, put a grade into it and compact it. And hopefully it'll last for a few years. Uh, Red Hill Road is just a, uh, it's grown quite a bit in popularity and it's, it's basically just a mud hole. Uh, as soon as it gets any sort of rain or what have you, it, it, it's basically almost unusable. So we're going to try to widen it and then put some uh, process gravel down. And last but not least, Farm River Meadows, that's also known as the Kaczynski. That's been an overlooked property for years. A lot of people don't even know how to get there. Uh, so this is our attempt to uh, really establish a formal driveway into it and a, you know, gravel parking lot, nothing major, but just to really make a statement that, yes, it does exist, yes, it's a town property, yes. and you're not trespassing. Got it. Okay, questions on the capital request is 66000 <coughs> Questions uh, from the general public or our TM members? All right, Rich, I think you're all set. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Next up is uh, cable TV, cable television, uh, page 28. Jamie, you're going to cover that? Sure. Uh, seasonal part-time help, that is, uh, to pay for the uh, camera, as you all know, all the filming, uh, the videoing, and, and the town meetings. Um, you may recall last year, Past year, we changed it over from subcontracting to uh, part time because we really just fall under the uh, uh, classification as a part time employee of the town of Grampus. Uh, $7,500, an increase of $500 to account for um, 
uh, just a 2% increase for part-time employees, as well as a little bit of extra dollars in there for additional, uh, we're seeing increased meetings coming out of the pandemic that are being uh, video recorded. Last is the donation expense, holding that flat. We went up to $8,000 a couple of years ago. That's a donation to BCTV, uh, really to kind of supplement the loss in revenue uh, due to cord cutting. They get their large portion of the fees are through the cable uh, bill sure. subscribers. They get a portion um, as people cut the cord from the cable subscribers. Uh, that impacts their revenue. Sure. Okay, total request of 15600 increase of $500. Is there questions on this budget? Mm -hmm. Questions from the uh, RTM members or members of the public? If not, we're all set. Move on to Board of Finance, page 13. Uh, Jim, you're going to cover the next couple on this? Yes. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, Board of Finance, uh, the, the, this is... Uh, your area of the budget, the uh, board clerk is sitting across from me. Uh, the audit, uh, as you know, is uh, is uh, is a service that the uh, the board of finance uh, appoints in towns with board of finances. According to state statute, the board of finance has the appointing authority. Uh, that amount is actually less than uh, what our current uh, contract is. Uh, however, we do get an offset. The board of ed actually contributes towards the audit as well. The increase there is because uh, the audit costs have gone up. Uh, and next year is, uh, is, uh, is anyone's guess, but uh, I'm hoping that we got most of the increase this year. Uh, the actuarial services, uh, basically we have uh, three, uh, three areas where we require actuarial services, uh, the, f the two pension funds and the OPEP trust. And so we have valuations, and we also have uh, uh, GASB reporting, which then in turn goes uh, into our audit. And then, uh, you know, the $2,100 for the advertising, printing, and binding, that, that typically is, uh, is used for, uh, you know, just the uh, uh, annual budget books, the binders, the, uh, the printing, and... Uh, and binding. Yeah, I mean, that's not too much to <laughs> add to that. Okay. That's good. So the request is 105676 an uh, increase of $5,637. Uh, we do put a legal notice in the paper <laughs> after you guys <laughs> Catherine. Okay. I'm timing him. <laughs> yeah, I, Are there questions from the finance director on this budget? <laughs> Be closer to 10 o'clock. <laughs> We're all set. Questions from the uh, general public or the members of the RTM? Okay, thanks, Jim. So, next we'll move on to uh, fiscal services, page 14. And uh, that's you again. That, that, that's the uh, that fiscal services, uh, finance department, uh, charter refers to it as the treasurer. Uh, basically, uh, you know, it, it, it's the uh, the finance budget, as we say, our uh, postage, uh, you know, many of you know postage has been going up. Uh, you probably saw that first class stamp is going up a little over 5%. Uh, you know, currently uh, we're projecting about 39500 for this year, so you had roughly another 5% on top of that. We just put 5000 in the meter, uh, I think it was this week, and uh, so we're anticipating an increase in that area. <coughs> uh, the software, uh, I know there was some. Uh, reference to uh, to the ClearGov product, and uh, about a year ago we bought uh, the debt books. So those uh, those items are really what's driving uh, the increase in that account. And uh, and Catherine said that uh, it reminded me that part of that increase is because the tax is sending out more uh, delinquent notices, which is a good thing. But uh, like I said, we were projecting. Uh, higher amounts uh, than our budget, so I will be coming uh, for a transfer for that, and then you add the other 5% uh, cost increase. So those are some of the things that are that are driving that. Okay. Um, so a total request of 549690 for the fiscal services, increase of $48,984. Uh, 
questions from the board on that? Questions from RTM members, members of the public? Okay, um, thanks Jim on that budget. Uh, move on to public celebration, page 49. Uh, request, total request of $36,276, increase of $979. Um, any highlights on that, Jim? Yeah, I mean, part of, part of the reason it looks like they're, uh, you know, essentially that, that is all of the, uh, uh, we have the fireworks, that's a $20,000 contribution, obviously. Uh, the town band, so the other supplies is, is uh, sheet music, uh, patriotic observances. You know, we have a variety of groups, you know, stand, obviously Stony Creek's one of the groups that uh, marches in the parades. Uh, and then we also have, uh, in terms of the seasonal and part-time, uh, is the uh, stipend for the uh, town band director. Okay. Questions on this budget? Members of the RTM, general public. Okay, thanks, Jim, on that one. Next would be sewer assessment fund, page 64. All right, the sewer assessment fund is basically just the uh, ins and outs uh, for the sewer assessments. There's Request no of $16,472 and uh, the Small increase of fifteen hundred for the audit portion of it. Um, does the board have questions on this budget? No. RTM members, members of the public, questions on the sewer assessment budget, sewer assessment fund. Thank you. With none, we'll move on to pensions and contributions. Uh, on page fifty-six. Yeah, I'm just going to go up to the table and I'll be joined by Margaret, and we'll cover these these, these last couple. Thank you. Hi, Margaret. How are you? Very well. So the pension and contribution uh, budget on page 56, the request is for $7,039,140, increase of $523,345. Um, and uh, Jim will provide, the, uh, Margaret will provide the highlights, the volunteer Fire stipend is the same at seventy thousand. Social Security is up by thirty-two thousand based on the payrolls. Um, municipal retirement is up four hundred eighty-five thousand, and the police pension uh, increase of ten thousand dollars essentially. Yeah, the municipal retirement is obviously the big driver there, and uh, I think some of you know because you've seen it in uh, in, in multiple budgets is uh, some years back, the state of Connecticut uh, changed their actuarial assumptions. Uh, they, they used to be north of 8%. Uh, they lowered it to 6.9%. And so as a result of that, uh, those liabilities were uh, discounted by a lower interest rate, so, so the contributions have gone up. Uh, what they've tried to do is uh, ease the impact on uh, MERS member communities by phasing that in. Um, and so, uh, on the uh, on that retirement municipal employees, just as a reminder, that is uh, that is basically everyone uh, other than police. Uh, the police have their own uh, pension fund, and theirs is uh, you know is relatively uh, stable. Uh, and then the other one, in terms of the volunteer fire, uh, we've kept that flat. At the eighty-seven thousand, the seventy thousand is a different type of number. That's uh, for the stipend. That's what the volunteers get when they go on. They, there are certain call requirements that they meet. Uh, you know that number is, uh, you know, as you can see from the twenty-one, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Uh, we didn't spend the full seventy thousand uh, this past year. I, I don't have the exact number in front of me, but it is consistent with what the chief reported earlier, and that is that. Uh, the, uh, the volunteers' uh, numbers, or at least in terms of folks that are qualifying, are, uh, are dropping off. So. Okay. Questions on this budget? 
questions from RTM members or board of fi or uh, general public? Okay, we'll move on to employee group insurance on page 57. Total request six million five hundred twenty-one thousand, increase of ninety-two thousand five twenty-one. Sure. Margaret, you want yeah. to get that one? Yeah, the, the, the major um, increase here is also a decrease in some respects because of the change we've initiated by going to the Connecticut Partnership Plan um, for our employees, for all employees, full-time employees except the fire department. They moved to a different plan, their own fire association plan. Um, both of uh, we've been able to hold cost on both products, and very happy about that. Um, okay. So um, the increase is projected for the Connecticut Partnership Plan as of this month to be a seven percent increase. We still have one more month to go to, but actually we're very pleased with that, um, considering we had a fourteen percent increase quoted to us last year with our old Anthem plan. So I um, am pleased with our, our process so far. That's good, okay. And the, the OPEB is... Um, yeah, the, o the OPEB is, 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 is been dropping. I, you know, we track it over the years, it was considerably higher, but that, that in, in large uh, amount reflects the funding status of the plan. Right, okay, that's good. Questions on this budget request? Questions from RTM members, members of the public? Okay, thank you. We'll move on to the next budget, municipal insurance. Ways and Means has a uh, purview over this. Uh, page 58. And the request is 2758365 Increase of 301000 yeah, that, and, and again, these are estimates that uh, Margaret and I receive from uh, our insurance broker. They go out to the different markets on the various lines of coverage. Um, and, you know, there's sort of like a composite. There's you know, general liability. There's auto, elected officials, uh, cybersecurity is another area where it's gone up uh, on a percentage uh, quite a bit. It's uh, obviously the general liability and, and the property and the auto are some of the bigger uh, drivers of that. And again, it's it's not something we necessarily have control over at this point because uh, you know our coverage is, is premium based. Okay. Um, who's our broker of record on this? Seeger. Uh, yeah, it's HD Seeger. They're part of the Acrosure okay. network. Hey, Jim, who's the insurance carrier? Oh, um, do you remember, Margaret? Who's the yeah, we have we have several actually, right. depending right. on the policy. Um, Trident does the general liability. Um, Sedwick does the claims management portion of that okay. and controls the claims processing. Which okay, it's is, one. It's not one carrier. No, okay. it is actually not. One carrier. Okay. Other questions on the uh, insurance <coughs> municipal insurance budget? Questions from RTM members or members of the public? Okay, thank you on that. Next is uh, two budgets that come under the Administrative Services Committee for the RTM, uh, Labor Relations on page 20. Yes, that's me. Um, I have recommended an increase this year. We currently have um, six active contracts currently, and um, we'll have two more next year. Um, so that'll be eight contracts we'll have in negotiations over the next 15, so, 15 months, really. Okay. And um, who's our labor attorney? Um, William Ryan. Ryan, Ryan and Ryan. Familiar with us for yes. many years. His his pricing is is very competitive. So the request here is for ninety three thousand six hundred increase to thirty one thousand uh, to cover the uh, six plus two of the eight uh, contracts that are anticipated between now and the end of next fiscal year. Well, fair uh, to say, it'll be a rolling process for sure because we we are currently active with six of them. Six of them. Um, I hope to be back before 
the RTM with one of them at least by July. Okay. Questions on the labor relations budget? Board members, Charlie? Wait a minute. Sorry. Are these just the unions in the town hall or no. the, the board of ed yeah. too? No, this is just, we have nine unions just in, for the town employees, it excludes board of ed. Okay. This is just town site. Yeah, okay. Other questions on labor relations? Uh, Mr. Frank, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I mean, for many years, Attorney Ryan of Ryan and Ryan has requested a flat fee, which I believe has been 62500 And, I mean, we're seeing a, an increase of almost 50% this year, to, uh, 31000 more. Now, I mean, I've heard presentations by Attorney Ryan before to this body, you know, as he's requested his amount every year, and he's never said, well, you know, I'm going to do six, or I'm going to do eight. He's always just requested the flat rate. So my question is, I mean, how come, you know, there's almost a 50% raise, you know, on this? Thank you. Um, I, sure. need, I need to clarify one thing you said. Um, the attorney fees are hourly rates. They're not flat fees. We do not negotiate on an annual basis because of the variance of the need. And as you will probably remember, two, year, two years prior, we used less money than 62000 based on the need at this time. So it's worked in the town's advantage to keep it at an hourly rate if they're fairly low hourly rate. Um, and I, I don't wish to change that because of the variance of the need of using a labor attorney or non variance I do anticipate greater need in the next 16 months for the use of an attorney because we have 80 contracts that are still active. So buying would increase the need. Thank you. Okay, uh, other questions uh, with regards to the labor relations budget? Thank you. If, if, uh, we move on to human resources on page 30. Total request of 345328 increase of $5,360. So um, part of the recommended increase is an increased cost in our HRS services. Um, and I'll be back here on um, Monday at your next meeting. The regular meeting to talk about the contract. Okay. And um, I'll present at that point. There's a slight increase in our contract. That's why you're seeing an increase of 1.5 percent under HRS. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, questions from the board on this budget? Questions, uh, RTM members or members of the public? Joe. Um, Jamie, and uh, uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, if I just uh, it is related to. The yeah. Human resources and Margaret brought about coming out back in the next meeting. We have your regular meeting uh, next Monday night. Uh, during the uh, director of the animal shelter of seeking a uh, salary adjustment uh, for that position. And actually, we we're looking to make it effective this current fiscal year. Um, so I'll be bringing that before the board and with, uh, Margaret on. Uh, for your review and consideration on next Monday night, but I just wanted to bring that to the board's attention. That uh, amount is not reflected in the requested budget. Okay. Something we'll consider at that time on Monday. Okay, thank, thank you, you for that update. Um, so, Jim? Yeah, actually, uh, you, know, you had mentioned about the, the transition and, and some of the little quirks earlier. Uh, one of the quirks, and I neglected to present these three items uh, under fiscal services, is that in, the, in this system, each capital project has to have a sponsor. So uh, items that were presented in the past, uh, you know, in the capital, um, are now uh, submitted under the treasurer, which is, is my office. Uh, I'll just read them to you. It would be 150000 for the public works lease, which is in the uh, section of the... Uh, uh, the 5,000 accounts. Uh, okay. And then the uh, 
115,000, which would represent the town share of the Board of Ed uh, Technology Fund. Uh, and then uh, last but not least would be uh, 310,000 for the Coastal Resiliency Reserve. And those are on page what? 75, 74, and 73 of the capital section. Or of the, uh, this, this section. Yeah. Uh, 74, 75, 70, 73, 74, and 75. Okay. So um, I got, there's uh, 147,000 for the uh, lease fund public works. Uh, this is the annual rent payment. And then you've got the uh, BOT technology piece, the, uh, the lease for, for, for 115000 um, And then, as Jim pointed out, you have the 310000 that's uh, the Coastal Resilience um, request. Uh, okay, do we have, um, does the board have questions with regards to these requests? These are consistent with prior years. Um, no questions uh, from the board right now. Um, Frank, do you have a question? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. On the Coastal Resiliency Fund, page 75, as I remember, that was originally established by a transfer from the um, undesignated fund balance. So my question is, as the fund balance now contains about $33 million per the auditor uh, for, for 21, it's probably grown even more for 22. I mean, how come we have to tax the public $300,000 for, for the fund? Can't you just transfer it from the fund balance? Thanks for the uh, question, Frank. Um, that will be uh, taken under consideration in this process. So, um, but thank you for the, uh, for the question. Are there other uh, questions or comments with uh, regards to the capital requests from the finance director or sponsorship from the finance director? Uh, if, if no more, then I think we're, what I would need to do for, uh, for tonight is entertain a motion to, um, to go into recess for the public hearing and we'll reconvene tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. I'll make a motion to recess. Yeah, there capital okay. for human resources? Uh, no, not for human resources. Oh, okay. For, human, for um, human services. Okay, I'm work. sorry. So the motion has been made to recess the, uh, pub the public hearings until tomorrow night. Made by Victor, Second. seconded by Jeff for discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, folks. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.